There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. I'm Austin Johnson. I'm Connor Azagari. And this is Filmgasm. welcome back we're finally here we're at the end of the road for our top 10 films of the 2010s project adam's back with us again of course to finish this thing off properly uh it's been april 17th to now september 27th damn jesus christ uh thank you guys for for kind of going with this 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 little idea we had and we kind of started running with it and once we started we didn't stop and it's gone on for months now finishing it off with whiplash directed by damien chazelle written and directed by damien chazelle uh an incredible movie obviously this is my my mine and connor's number one uh adam i'm sure you thought about it for your list but you probably knew deep down that we were both gonna have it so you were like ah i'll save it but uh it's good to have you on adam because i know you enjoy this one oh yeah love it yeah it was in the, i had a band of like so I, I put all my five star movies on there um and i had a band of like 10 four and a half star movies that i was choosing from for like my last three spots and this was like, you know, right there. I mean, it was all, you know, right thing. But yeah. again, I, I kind of had a feeling what at least one of you would have it, probably both of you. So I was like, well, we'll get to talk about it. So let's kind of highlight some other stuff. But I, I think if I look back on it and after having watched it again, I was like, if I had to redo this, like this would be in the top 10. Um, like if it was if it was strictly just like my personal 10, like making this thing and not like trying to, you know, like shout out as many movies as possible, uh, which I didn't totally do that. I don't think any of us really did that, but we did probably have a little bit of like, ah, oh, well, like this person may have that. So I'd like to get this one in there. Um, yeah. And and we all like we all had an animated movie, you know. Like we try yeah. to do like there's you know like we all had a comedy you know type thing like all the back like which is funny because we all had them like at the back end like the fun yeah. movies <laughs> and yep, yep. and and, and then, like, then it shit got real uh real quick. Yeah. Uh, and I think I, I thought about it too. I know we we're gonna do a kind of a recap of our ten, so I'll, I'll save it for that. But I had an, I had one thing that I was like, okay, if I just straight up did, ignored all the rules that we kind of put in place for each other, like would this be my top ten? Uh, but I'll get to that. I'll get to that when we talk more about that. That's interesting. That's an interesting thought. Um, Mine would be pretty close for sure. I mean, I'm sure if I did it now, you know, again, this is, you know, this is in April when we decided to do this, like things always change. If you're a big movie fan, if you're someone who allows your emotions to just kind of take over, like art's going to hit you differently at different times. Um, so that's just, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. But uh, I do have a recap. Um, you know, I, 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 I listed all the years out from 2010 to 2019 and wrote down uh, how many movies we had per year. Uh, which was interesting because we did represent every single year, some more than others, of course. But uh, let's go ahead and just kind of go through that. And then we uh, are definitely going to dive deep into Whiplash and how, just how good that movie is. Uh, I, I can't wait. I've already seen it three times this year. And I just, <laughs> it's just, it, it's one of those rewatchables that I, I, it just goes by. I'm not really sure. It's so brutal and so cruel, but it just happens. And, and I'm so, so happy to have it in my life. But uh, 2010, uh, Adam had, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World uh, as, as his number 10. Uh, he also had Social Network as his number one. And I had the Social Network as my number four. So those are the two movies that represented 2010. Uh, Scott Pilgrim and Social Network was all three of us. Uh, it's, that's been the mainstays of this project. We've had guests here and there. But uh, us three have knocked out most of these. Uh, 2011, only one movie. This is the only year that has just one movie, and that's Rango. Uh, that was Adam and I. That's my number seven. That's my animated movie that I felt like I had to include, but I, I just love Rango. That was a fun episode. We did a really cool, we did a really cool um, animated movie bracket where I just kind of tested Adam and like, uh, like basically forced him to like choose between, you know, like kill his darlings, <laughs> you know, yep. Yep. Uh, it was really cool. It was really cool. It was a fun episode. And that was, yeah, the, you know, more of the fun stages of this project before we got, before we got really serious. There, uh, there should be another movie from 2011, but we, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We so are. yeah, I want to go ahead and talk about that. Moneyball. Obviously, we've <laughs> referenced to Moneyball more than any other movie throughout this <laughs> throughout this project. Uh, and I watched it. I think I watched it in June. And yeah, I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> I love that thing to death. It's one of those, uh, it's the I think I speak for all three of us, it's the definition of a rewatchable where you can you can catch it like on TV and be like 30 minutes in, and you're like, yeah, fuck it. Like Let's see what Brad Pitt's up to, you know, like, see what, see what Billy Bean's doing, you know, with, with the Oakland A's. Uh, and it's just so good. It moves, 
moves so well. And I think we all regret not, not picking it because we clearly want to do an episode on it. Um, uh, Connor, well, and I, we all did the, we all did the, Oh, well they'll have it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah but like, you shouldn't do that in these projects. Uh, we've, know, le- we've learned, we've learned, like just go with your heart. Just go well, no, for next year. We know, we know now. Yes. Yeah. I mean, next year we are going to do another huge project like this, but we'll, we'll definitely take some time off and do other shit, uh, throughout the rest of the year. Um, yeah, Connor and I did Moneyball on Oscar Sunday a long time ago. I want to say like three years ago. Like we did it. It was like one of the early, early movies we did in 2020 uh, when we first started Oscar Sunday. And uh, of course, we both raved about it. I, I can't quite remember like where it was exactly. Had we started doing the award type thing for those movies or or if it was one of the you know first 10 or so. I can't remember, Connor. Do you? Here, I can find out right now. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, directed by Bennett Miller, written by Aaron Sorkin, just classic. Classic. Episode twenty three. Ooh, that's really early. Yeah, I mean that yeah. that is almost three years ago. Yeah, that is uh, exactly November eighth, twenty twenty. Yep. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. That was during obviously um, that first year of COVID, right? When uh, you just leaned heavier into the stuff that you like. You know, like your passions became even deeper. Uh, and you, you, for, for us, I, you know, movies was well, definitely a huge, huge part of that year. Or you gain new ones. Or, or gain new ones. Yeah. I definitely, I feel like I watched a lot of basketball and like talked to you on the phone about basketball a lot because of the last dance, uh, the documentary that came out, um, what was that like probably in May of 2020 well, and, yeah. and, uh, and a lot, a lot of movies. That was the year I signed up for Criterion channel and just really became who I am as a movie person now. Uh, 2012. Uh, Connor had Django as his number two, and I had The Master as my number two. Those are the only two movies from 2012, both bangers, like absolute knockout, you know, uh, some of the best stuff of the decade, and from two just freak of nature directors, uh, Tarantino and PTA. 2013, these two movies couldn't be any different. We have Her, which is Adam's Her. number three, and uh, The World's End, which is Connor's number nine. Uh, <laughs> so Her, Her was all three of us. And you know what? Let me go back. Django was, uh, I want to shout out Maja. She like absolutely crushed it. She came in for like the most serious, like stretch of, of this project. I think she did parasite. She, she did hereditary <laughs> parasite, uh, Django and get out. Like, I mean, <laughs> applause, you know, hats off to Maja. She's incredible. She's obviously going to become, uh, um, an even bigger part of what we're doing moving forward. And she's probably going to be, be like one of the main players in this project that we're going to do next year that we'll probably have to do with the 2000s. Uh, super excited for that. Uh, her was all three of us, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the world's end. I was sick. So you guys did that together. Yep. Fantastic episode. Really r- one of those ones where you guys were just getting to know each other as podcasters, as voices in movies, like h- how y'all communicate. And I think that was a huge moment because I pulled out uh, and y'all just were like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. Ended up being a great episode. Fantastic movie. Super fun. Uh, so yeah, sh- shout out to both y'all for, for crushing it there. Uh, 2014, you got three, three movies. Inherent Vice, which was my number eight. All three of us were on that one. Uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, that was both y'all's number four, I want to say. Or number five. Mm, four. Yeah, four, because Connor and I had, had Hereditary uh, five. Uh, y'all did that together. Great, another great episode. Uh, awesome movie that's one that i definitely considered for my top 10 but again kind of going to the like do i go with my heart or do i go with knowing that you guys were gonna have it uh and then whiplash uh the movie we're gonna be talking about today and obviously all three of us are on this one this is uh mine and connor's number one there's really no doubt about it the whole time we both kind of knew uh this is going to be the end point of this project is is whiplash 2015 two movies both from adam adam's number Nine and number eight, uh, Inside Out and Sicario. All three of us did both of those. Very different movies, but very, very good. Two of the best from the year. Uh, the Sicario episode was was fucking awesome. Like, just got, got to talk about Denny and, you know, Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin, Emily Blunt, all these great actors, uh, Danny Kaluuya. Uh, and Inside Out, we got to talk about uh, mine and Adam's, you know, our favorite Pixar movie outside of uh, Toy Story and, and one that Connor, it's, it's growing on Connor for sure. That uh, was a great episode. 2016, three. Uh, Moonlight, which is my number three. Adam's number six. All three of us, again, did that one together. Uh, we did a really cool 
supporting actor uh, heist heist movie draft. And that was a blast. Uh, definitely opened the floodgates for other ideas that we've executed since then. Uh, everybody wants some. It's my number 10. We were, we were all three on that one as well. Uh, love that movie to death. That's one that I felt like I had to include because it kind of shows a different part of my taste compared to the other movies that are on my list. Uh, and the other one is OJ Main America, which we chose to skip because it's about six hours. And it's, I don't know how you make a singular episode on that whole thing. What I would like to do one day is do maybe a two-parter where we get to discuss just the documentary. Don't do any like categories or awards or anything. Just straight up kind of discuss it. Talk about the art of, of, of the documentary and how, how important it is uh, and that, that how important that movie is. So I really want Connor to see it and watch it and like kind of pick his brain about it. Cause he's a huge history guy. And that movie has a lot to do with our history. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. good stuff. Uh, 2017 two here as well. Uh, we got Adam's number two, get out, which again was Adam Connor and Mija. And we have Coco, which our brother Jeremy got to join Connor for that one. Uh, so that was just Connor and Jeremy, another great episode. We kind of we wanted to bring Jeremy in on more. His schedule is just really tough, for, like to work with us. But uh, him coming on Coco felt right. Uh, it's one of his favorite Pixar movies. Deals with music. He's definitely a big music guy. So listening to Connor and Jeremy kind of kind of you know go on about that one was really cool. Uh, lo- love love that episode. Uh, 2018. We have three. We have Ready Player One, which was Connor's number ten. Uh, just Connor and I did that together. That was a great episode. We ended up talking about like way deeper stuff than we <laughs> anticipated. Uh, Hereditary, which is mine and Connor's number five. And uh, Maja joined us for that one. Absolute blast. Uh, Hail Payman, I said about 45 times <laughs> while recording. A great episode. Uh, and then Mining the Gap, which was my number six. Adam joined me for that one. We talked about all kinds of documentaries, sports documentaries, and just kind of re- really, we like that was one of those where didn't matter if we had record going or not. That's a conversation Adam and I have continuously in our lives. So it really, it really felt like a brother episode. Like this is just the shit that we know, like the back of our hands. So it was really cool. We talked about 30 for thirties and different sports stocks. We, we highlighted OJ made America for sure. The last dance. It was great. Uh, Winding the gap must see. And 2019 is the winner with four movies. I thought I was going to say it must be, it must have the most. Yeah. Recency bias. Maybe. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's the thing. These four movies rule. Uh, Parasite, which y'all both had. Connor had it number three. Adam had it number five. Maja joined y'all for that one. Fantastic episode. Y'all got some really cool. Yeah, y'all got some yeah. really cool stuff on that that episode. It, Parasite's just it, it, it has an argument for being you know I hate doing this, but it has an argument for being the best movie of the decade. Just like international, you know, like not just like American production, uh, like all, the world. <laughs> you know, it's one of those like just complete knockout. Gotta see. Uh, Connor's number six was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That was just him and I. Uh, I believe, Adam, you were out of town and you couldn't make that one. You wanted to, but... I was in Hollywood, honestly. <laughs> that's, there you go. Yeah, you were, you were actually in LA. Uh, yeah. That's when Connor and I did the uh, Quentin Tarantino Character Hall of Fame. Absolute blast. That's one of those things, again, uh, just like Mind the Gap and the sports documentary thing was just like second nature for Adam and I. The Tarantino Character Hall of Fame was something Connor and I could have done in our sleep. It was an absolute, you know. No, you missing know. missing that episode is my biggest regret of this whole series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The movie, yeah. that movie kicks so much. It just ass. wasn't. Uh, I just wasn't gonna be able to do it. Um, and then we have Connor's number eight, which was Uncut Gems. And uh, as we started talking about that movie, because uh, all three of us were on that one, Connor was like, "Why the fuck don't y'all have this?" <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it, it, I know. It covers our like favorite things, like the Sandman, basketball, betting, just yeah. Lickie Lickie Stanfield, Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett, <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, Julia Stiles, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's it's great, great, great stuff. Um, and then we have uh, what did I say, Julia Stiles? Yeah, it's like Julia, Julia Stiles, Fox, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> Would have been a very different movie. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, <laughs> I, I caught that, and no one called me out, and I was like, wait, I I'm calling me. Well, so I gotta... well, no, it took me a second. I was like, I was like, what part was she in? I was like, did I miss that? <laughs> it's like Julia, Julia Fox, very Julia different Fox. person, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, last one, uh, Waves, uh, 2019. That was my number nine. And that was the only one that Brianna came on. That was the movie that she looked at our entire list and she's like, that's my favorite one that y'all have. So uh, that was really cool. We did an A24 bracket. Uh, I asked her like what her favorite A24 fun. movies were. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Brianna's been on a few episodes. I want her on more, but she is like, yeah, there's only certain, you know, ones that, I, that, I, yeah, that I really want to go for. So uh, I, I understand it, but uh I'd love to get her on more stuff, especially uh, here here coming up in October for you know, the spooky season. So 
Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's our list, man. I mean, I want to inc- I want to point out real quick. Waves is the weirdest podcast I've ever been a part of because I had yeah. to sit there and watch you guys. Uh, because you were using my account and we hadn't yet figured out, like you hadn't figured out how to log in. So like basically I hosted it with y'all and just sat there quietly, turned off my camera and just didn't participate, which yeah, was I didn't know that. very weird. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Spectating. Yeah. Thankfully we figured out we didn't have to do that going forward. Yeah. But yeah, that was, the, that's the strangest podcast experience I've ever had. Just watching <laughs> you guys do, a, do an episode. Yeah, talk, like crying. Yeah, I just act like I'm not there. You were like an old school producer that was not never chimed in. You know, it's like one of those like yeah, like podcasts where they yeah. when they said something questionable, I would occasionally turn turn my camera on and like do like a weird face to like trip them up. I did that a couple times. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like I think Brianna said something about how like she likes Midsummer like as much as Hereditary and Connor. Yeah, like, and I was wait like, a wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah shit like that uh so that was a lot of fun that wave yeah waves yeah it, it cut, cuts deep it's, it's so we it's, did it's we did determine um that uncut gems was, was the latest release of any of the movie that we picked right? december december of 2019 is uncut yeah. gems yeah uh yeah waves was sometime in the fall once upon a time I mean, is in the summer the earliest would have been social network right or scott pilgrim uh probably, probably scott, scott, pilgrim. Pilgrim. Scott, pilgrim. Yeah. scott pilgrim yeah i think that was the summer yeah yeah, Scott Pilgrim probably, probably like June or July, all the way to, uh, or maybe I'm looking it up. I think I'm gonna guess August. Um, I'm gonna say July for Scott Pilgrim. July 27th. Okay. July 27th. We saw that in New York. Yeah, it was a lot of we fun. Uh, so July, July t- 2010 to December 2019. All these movies that we talked about, not one of them did I not enjoy rewatching. You know, I I had a blast the entire time. I every single one. And, and you know, of course, because you're watching, some of them are your, you know, ten of them are like, oh, you know, well, these are my favorites, so like, of course, I want to rewatch it. But even the, you know, uh, even the Ready Player Ones, the World's Ends, uh, like when Adam picked Sicario, I was kind of like, oh, okay, like I, I remember loving that, but I, I forgot how much I loved it. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, because you know, someone, meaning one of you two, is going to like bring that passion and kind of explain why they picked it. Was all was like all totally worth it. Uh, and we've finally come to the end. Uh, it feels yeah, feel, feels feels good to like be at the finish line, but also I'm like, damn, <laughs> like, I want to keep. I want I could keep going for a long, long time. There's so many movies from the 2010s that I that I really like. Uh, obviously, because we this is the decade we've been watching the most movies, like going to the theater the most, anticipating stuff the most. Uh, you know, Adam, you were born in ni- 90, 1990, and Connor and I in 1995. So like. It just makes sense that like all three of us were like really active movie watchers and movie goers in the 2010s. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I actually was going to ask you really quickly, really quickly. Could you could you run through them just like just one more time so we can kind of like hear them all in a row? I actually was going to count which ones I did not see in theater because I think I saw almost all of them in theater. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, right, do you want ahead. me just like like just rattle through them? Yeah, just rattle through them. I'll just yeah, like, count them. Like okay. I think it's it's good for listeners too to hear exactly like hear them all all together. Okay, so I'm going to go through Adams, then Connor's in mine. Uh, Adams, 10. This is, I don't have this written down, so bear with me. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Inside Out, Sicario, OJ Made in America. Obviously not a theater thing, but, right, you know. Right, right, yeah. uh, Number seven, your number six is Moonlight, five, Parasite, four, Grand Pudibus Hotel, three, Her, two, Get Out, one, Social Network. Okay, so I saw all of those in theaters except except OJ. Yeah. Okay, so now Connor's ten is Ready Player One, The World's End, Uncut Gems, in uh, Coco, uh, bah, 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 One Spot Time in Hollywood, Hereditary, Four, Grand Budapest Hotel, Three. Why can't I think of three? Uh, Parasite, uh, Two, Django, One, Whiplash. Okay, yeah. saw all of those in theaters. Same. Um, for for myself, everybody wants some waves. Eight inherent vice. Uh, seven Rango, mind in the gap. Didn't see that in theaters because that came straight to Hulu. Right. Um, right, right. Uh, five Hereditary, four Social Network, three Moonlight, two The Master, and one Whiplash. Okay, so there's three that I didn't see in theater. Mind in the gap, which I don't even like really count. So it's really only two that I didn't see in theater. Yeah. Which are uh, waves and Rango? 
Oh, two of mine. God damn. Yeah. You didn't see Waves in theaters? I did not. No. So did I, I must have shown that to you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good. Was that at um, that apartment that dad had for like a bit? Yep. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 It was. I remember. It was a, I remember. It was like a group of us that watched it together. Yeah. I don't think it was in theaters for very long. And then Rango, it was I, on. It was. I saw on Netflix like a, like way back, like when it kind of first went on to Netflix, like a couple years after it came out. Um, but yeah, I definitely. So yeah, those are the only two that like were eligible to see in theaters that I did not see in theaters of the whole project. I, I, I saw them all except for those two docs. Yeah. Uh, Connor, what about you? I didn't see most of these in theaters. Actually, I, I wrote them all down. Um, from Adam's list, I did not see in theaters Scott Pilgrim, OJ, Moonlight, Grand Budapest, Her, and The Social Network. Damn. From mine, I did not see Coco. I did not see The Grand Budapest. From Austin, you didn't see Budapest in in theaters. I didn't. I yeah. missed it. At some, I missed it. I found wow. it on on Netflix through the mail and fell in love immediately. But I did not see it in theaters. I didn't know that. That was a magical theater experience. So I bet it was. <laughs> I saw that at the Bijou. Yeah, I mean, just like, ugh, yeah. And then uh, what a time! What a time! I bet. <laughs> and then from your list, I didn't see Everybody Wants Some, Waves, Rango, Minding the Gap, Social Network, Moonlight, and The Master in theaters. Damn! Wow. Connor's uh Connor's taste has evolved. Oh yes, yes it has. <laughs> well, I, I think I think uh, part of the reason I was I was, I was curious about that awesome is because like I think maybe I was thinking about you know my age and like what I did so th- those those ten years I was living you know in College Station kind of like half in college half just working I didn't really go to college very long but um just working but I was there for four years I was in St Louis for two years I was back here for a bit so it's just like there kind of was I was always but like the constant was like I was going to movies so that's that the ages of. 20 to 29 for me so it's like that's a perfect you know what i mean or 19 mm, really yeah. 19 to 29 for me so it's like that was a perfect kind of decade for me to kind of like be kind of exploring all this stuff and finding taste and things like that so um i had a feeling i was like i bet you i saw almost all of these in theaters and I, and I did so that was cool yeah yeah whereas connor and i were 15 at the beginning of the decade to 25 right right so and when we do when we do 2000s there'll be less that i saw in theaters because at the very beginning of the day definitely for you guys but then for me too like Definitely at the beginning of the decade, I wouldn't I wasn't seeing as many like, you know, in 2001 in theaters um, that I was in 2012, you know? Oh, I, I don't think I don't think I don't think any of the movies I'll have like that I'll like want on my list will be movies I like saw in theaters. It's like Mulholland Drive. Like I was six. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and, well, you didn't and, see it way later. Yeah. 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 I didn't I didn't see it till I was yeah 20 i'll have so, a few i'll have a few i can already think of a few that i'm like oh i i definitely would have seen that i would have been you know 16 17 you know um but no that, they'll definitely be it'll probably be like half and half yeah i don't know i mean i'm just thinking but, like but yeah that, that's where the, the five years for me helps you know the five extra years did you see like, like i guess here here's like a quite you know we're not doing this till like fucking march so like like did you see like zodiac in theaters there no blood? I did not i didn't so there will be blood in theaters no country no country i don't think so Super bad? Yes. Yeah. See, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense that you'd see that in theaters at age yeah. 17. <laughs> like yeah. Glorious Bastards saw that in theaters. Oh, I saw that in theaters too. I forgot. Yeah, that's a big yeah. one. It's a yeah. big one. That was my first Tarantino in theaters. Yeah. Mine yeah. too. Yeah. 14. What a time. Yeah. What a time. What a time to be alive. Uh, I I'll say, I'll say, you know, talking about 2014, Whiplash, talking about, you know, Budapest Hotel. Um, you know, Birdman, Nightcrawler, like that that year, Gone Girl. Like, I was at the, I was the Bijou was like my second home. Like I was there so much during that time Love to that see place. some of these. To, yeah, and, and you know, I often think about the Bijou. Um, one of my favorite Texas rappers from San, he's from San Antonio, really cool guy, uh, Baby Astro, spelled A Z T R O, has a song that de- like dedicated to that theater, um, and like. <laughs> I, I listened to it and he's not trying to like make you like cry, but I, like, I can't like help like just getting like extremely emotional thinking about like that time in my life being 19 uh, because Connor and I, Connor and I have the, you know, we're, we're both born in January. So we're like, whatever year it was, like we were that age the entire year, you know? So like for 2014, both of us being 19 years old and like those moments of choosing, um, you know, to go, whether it was with you, Adam, or dad, or both of y'all, or by myself, to see those particular movies was like a, was a decision. Was a decision, like a path that I decided to take as yeah. a movie fan. And like, without those decisions, Whiplash wouldn't be number one for me. <laughs> I've seen it so many times, and that, like, that theater experience is 
like so so crucial to my my fandom of it and my fandom of this this art form and like why it's so important to me so i, I want to talk just just to kind of give the bijou a shout out because it is by far and away my favorite theater that i've ever been to um of course of course there's like those real unique ones that you go to whether you're in a different city like connor and i you know got to go to the new beverly together and then i got to go with my wife and then i was like adam you have to go and you got to go see Slapshot and happy gilmore there you know like of course that's really cool and it's kind of a once in a lifetime maybe type thing but when there's a place where you live like in your hometown like where you're from that you like take pride in it just has a has a deeper like deeper spot even if it's it, even if it's not as nice or doesn't serve the right snacks yeah. or or whatever but like when it shows the kind of movies that you want to see the movies that don't get shown at massive you know megaplex you know those type of like huge comp, you know theaters that have you know 20 screens or or even some of the stuff that's in different areas as far as like demographic goes you, you just you just hold on to it you hold on to it tight well and it also when it, when it, it was it gone also, i felt like part of part of me was gone <laughs> like, yeah it also had those like old school seats and like it wasn't particularly convenient for like us like we didn't like really live over there like it was also nope. in a part of town that we didn't really go to that often so it was just like yeah we like had to make a point to kind of go i mean it's at that shitty mall yeah, yeah. wonderland yeah. uh <laughs> it's at that shitty crossroads, mall. crossroads mall yeah yeah uh but but like they, they they have that outside area right before you walk before you when you would used to walk right like the beaches yeah. like right when you walk in and they would have like jazz festivals and like art festivals and have this really cool fountain and like walk like walking down those steps is like yeah i mean i miss but, it i miss it so much but in that mall it almost felt like a place where you like step back in time you know what i mean yes. it's like, like you yes. walk in there it's like oh i just stepped back 15 years you know <laughs> like just like this the style of it like it's just like yeah so like late 80s early 90s style is yeah it's a really unique place yeah and, and, and i remember you know uh i mean it didn't take it didn't take long at all for like when Con- when i met connor for you and i to see movies there together um like we saw Beale Street there together, you know, just two dudes, just two dudes hanging out watching Regina King make us cry. <laughs> you know, well, you remember, like, Austin, you remember we went and saw Carol there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen so many movies there, like oh. countless, you know, countless from the decade. Uh, I, I took Brianna there a couple of times. You know, like we saw Sorry to Bother You there. We saw, um, yeah, I saw what's that, there that too. what's that Mr. Rogers movie, The Doc? Um, Won't you um, be my neighbor? Yeah, Won't You Be My Neighbor? We saw that there. Like they would show documentaries, they would show, like indie films, small films, some big films, you know, like it was just like, a, it felt like an, it felt like a fucking occasion, you know? Well, uh, and then they also did like, they would show like all five, you know, animated. Shows. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. And, and you know, and, you know, credit to embassy. They, they, they did that too this past year. They did the short thing. You know, it's also Santicos, uh, be, the Bijou. Well, as it was a Santicos theater uh, and, and embassy is as well. The, the one that's pretty close pretty close to really close to Adam and pretty, pretty close for me as well. And one that I know Connor's familiar with too. They try, they try to show that's where I saw waves, you know, like they try, they try to do shit. They try to take that torch. Like, all right, there's no other theater yep. in, in San Antonio that does this. So like, we'll take that, we'll take that, 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 that burden, you know? Um, Cause yeah, you have to, you have to put your, you have to kind of put it out there to like to, if you're going to be the theater that does this, it's kind of niche and like, yeah, you're cool, but you're not going to like, financially be able to sustain yourself so and we saw that happen uh really sad but uh Whip- whiplash kind of like the bijou whiplash that age where you like the world's just in front of you 19 years old for me I- i'll never i'll never forget like that moment in time connor connor where'd you see the whiplash i saw it at the bijou um oh okay, okay. i'm i would i would love if like i found out that like austin and i saw it the same day and like had no idea that'd be yeah. the like, greatest story um I do have to there's something I want to say about 2014. Yeah, um, please. 2014 is the year where I really realized who I was. And that's largely due to um a decision I made with Caleb to start mm. a, a movie review website we we called Filmgasm and that happened in 2014 and that is has proven to be the biggest most significant decision i have ever made because it has led me to you guys it has led me to colton it has led me to bringing isabel into this to connecting with Mija. like it has been damn i'm getting emotional here the most <laughs> amazing experience of my life doing this with you guys it really has this is i look forward to this every week i've grown as a person i've grown as a 
film buff. I've learned so much. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for uh, for being a part of this. Absolutely. Mm. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Ditto. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't got to do much for me to the waterworks to start pouring out. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I mean, super grateful for whatever was happening, like the stars aligned and meet, meeting you four years after like you started film guys with Caleb and um, it felt like uh felt like we like we're supposed we're just we're hundred percent supposed to be in each other's lives and uh, that's obviously proven proven to be true over time you know um, you stood by me at my wedding and like we do this every week we talk about it all the time it'll be 2 a.m on Tuesday night and I'm like hey man March uh, <laughs> hey man in, in March I have this idea <laughs> and like you you make it matter I make it matter because we both because we both do you know like it is like you don't have you don't have one without the other, you know. Like we both care so much about what we're doing. Uh, of course, I'm very very close with Adam, so having him be a part of this project and to continue to be a part of Film Guys moving forward is like very cool for me. Uh, again, I hope we can get Jeremy to 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 do more stuff. And I know him and Adam have a they have like a really cool project that they're going to start releasing fairly soon. So um, I'm very stoked for that. Like Connor, your ability to just like allow people to come in. Um, whether it's for a month or for years, it's very cool to watch and, you know, I ain't going nowhere. So, uh, no, and I, I admire both of y'all. I mean, I think Connor, you, you, you really drive this, but I think both of y'all, y'all's, y'all's dedication and like discipline to like, we will release something every week is really cool. I mean, I, I you know, fancy myself, a, a somewhat of a creative at times I and mean, it's not my job. It's not my, you know, whatever, but, um, there, I, there's been times where I've run websites and I have, I've had different things and I've had different podcasts and stuff like that. And I've, I, I lack that discipline at, at times with this stuff. And I think y'all's discipline to this, um, is pretty inspiring and pretty cool. So I uh, maybe want to be a part of it. Uh, it made it easier for me to be like, cause I mean, any week you'd be like, ah, let's, we'll just, let's just do that. We'll record that in a few days. We'll record that in a few days. And then it kind of falls by the way. So it's like, no, 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 we need to release this thing on Wednesday. And so it like makes me like, yeah, yeah. no, let's, let's lock it in. Let's do it. Let's, let's, you know, let's knock it out. And, um, that, that makes it, um, yeah, I think more enjoyable for everybody when there's like kind of like a bit of a commitment to it. Um, so I appreciate that. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun to be part of. And I, I very much enjoy it. looking forward to it every week and, and we'll enjoy continuing to do so. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We got, we got a lot of cool stuff coming over the next few months, like to finish out the year, we're going to be doing uh, like through October, November, December, we're going to be doing like really, really cool, like anniversary episodes, like movies that are hitting whatever, 20 years, 25, whatever, whatever it may be. And we're going to be like doing awesome, awesome movies. The the, the lineup is fucking nuts. <laughs> and, <is>. Yeah. <laughs> it, shit doesn't stop. What's going to be cool about that is like, we're, we're not we're not covering a 2010s movie for like a long time. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to go we're going to go away. we're going to do you know some 80s, some 90s, uh some 70s, you know, we're going to go we're going to go all over the place and then in January we're going to start some some awesome stuff. So very stoked for what 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 what's to come in the fall and especially in the winter. So uh but Whiplash today. I say but before that we got to finish this series. Let's let's <laughs> let's, let's do let's do that let's do this thing. Uh real quick, uh Whiplash 3 million dollar budget and made $50 million. That's like, fuck. Yeah. You know, like, like you can, you can do things small and, and profit if you do them right. 20 days of filming. Incredible. There's the short that came out um, a year before starring JK Simmons and um, uh, uh, Johnny, Johnny Simmons, I think is his, his last name. Uh, the kid from like perks being a wallflower. And uh, he's actually in Scott Pilgrim vs. the world. What's his, I think it's Johnny Simmons. Yes. yes. Yeah. Johnny yeah. Simmons. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's great. They're, they did the, the short together or whatever. And it was kind of like a concept. I like, hey, like, really what we want to do is make a full movie. Uh, Miles Taylor gets casted as Neiman. And like, the, you know, of course, the rest is history. Uh, three three Oscar wins at the uh, 87th Academy Awards. Best Supporting Actor, of course, for Mr. J.K. Simmons as Terrence Fletcher. Uh, best Film Editing and Best Sound Mixing. All of those make total sense. Uh, 8.5 and IMDb. 94% Rotten Tomatoes and 94% audience score. Very rare. Very, very rare. And 4.4 in Letterboxd. And we will be doing a segment on Letterboxd later on uh, to finish the show. So um, I, I do want to do some a little Oscar look because this is obviously a year that we we feel very strongly about, 2014. Uh, I, I just kind of really, you know, I'm, you know, you got JK getting the dub. Uh, I really just want to look at that that best picture category and kind of mostly pick Adam's brain because I know he's seen all of these. Uh, Connor and I did an episode on Birdman in February 
yeah, February or March, like right before the actual Oscars, we were, that was when we were still doing Oscar Sunday. We were like, we were stuck in it. We were doing, um, doing, doing Oscar movies every week. And uh, Birdman was special because, yeah, because 2014 is special. So Birdman takes the win, beating uh, American Sniper, Boyhood, The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Imitation Game, Selma, The Three of Everything, and Whiplash. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, no, like, love Birdman, but no, like, Whiplash 100% gets my vote. Budapest probably gets my second vote. And then Birdman gets third. That's probably where I land. I love Boyhood, but it's not like, uh, yeah, it's like three hours of, you know, I can see why people call it boring. But yeah, to me, to me, Whiplash and Budapest are the movies that are the best from this year as far as just kind of like, if you have a pulse, you're going to enjoy this. Uh, like lights out entertainment. Uh, Connor, what about you? Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, Whiplash is endlessly rewatchable. It's intimidating. It's fun. It's weirdly hilarious. It scares the shit out of people. It is the best picture of this year. Uh, Grand Budapest is hilarious and a very fun, just epic from Wes Anderson. Third place to me goes to The Imitation Game, which I know is not popular. Yeah, you love that movie, don't you? I do. It's, it made me cry. <laughs> you love the score. You love the score. It's an yeah. amazing score. It's a, a great story of just a man who was never given the accolades he deserved. He was cast aside because of who he was, despite the fact that he basically won World War II for, the, for England. I love Alan Turing's story, and I thought that movie was inspiring and beautiful. And then I... Same goes for the theory of everything. That movie also had me just locked in and sobbing. Yeah, not not. I, I like the Imitation Game better than the Theory of Everything for sure. Uh, okay. Imitation Game. I, there are moments of Imitation Game that I think are great. Uh, it it feels like that's a cool double feature with a uh, with an Oppenheimer uh, oh, yeah. Imitation Game. Some some twentieth <laughs> century madness. Uh, uh, I, I'm yeah. I mean I. I love uh, uh, Selma. I think that like movie has a lot to offer. Really, really, really solid. Uh, I'm, I'm not obviously obviously not crazy about American Sniper. If you have heard me talk at all, uh, it's to me fascinating to watch. Like if you can put everything, just kind of like you know, put your walls down and like watch it as a movie. It, but it, I mean, yeah, it's it's got a lot to unpack. I want to do a fake true stories on American Sniper so bad. I want to look into what really happened there. Do it. Do yeah. it. That'll be that'll be that'll be some tough work. Adam, uh, you've seen all these, I assume, and uh, what gets your vote? Whiplash, Birdman, Budapest. Uh probably. Whoa. I mean, favorite or best? Uh both. Like, kind of go down the middle. Like, what? I mean, your it's your vote. You know, like you yeah. you know. Um, what movie to you kind of represents when you think about twenty fourteen? Where's your mind go? <laughs> uh. Probably Whiplash. Probably Whiplash with, with I guess, uh, Grand Budapest, a, like, very, 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 very close second. Um, I think I like Budapest a little bit more, but I think this is probably a little bit better, if that makes sense. Whiplash. That's fair. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I saw both of them at the same, same, I think the same theater. Uh, and I remember after Whiplash ended, I immediately went to this coffee shop that was right down the street, which was very close to my house in college station and wrote a bunch of stuff and like knocked some stuff out. Cause I was just like, Oh man, like I'm, you know, uh, motivated. I have, I have so many thoughts on whiplash like that. I'm just like waiting to, to oh, like, yeah. about like Soon. More, more philosophical thoughts. Um, yeah. as someone who is, I mean, part of my job is to inspire others, you know, younger than me. Uh, yeah. A lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts. Yeah. But you don't like, you don't like all the names and stuff. So <laughs> What you don't know, you, you don't call them names and stuff. So I know. You know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Very different relationship uh, with the people I work with than than he has. Yeah. 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 Um uh, uh last Oscar thing I, I do want to say, and, and this would be my way of kind of just honestly just just talking about some shit I watched this week. Uh I, I, I like I really don't understand like at this particular Academy Awards, uh I guess two categories is what I'm really talking about. I don't I, I don't understand First off, Ray Fiennes in Budapest Hotel is not nominated for Best Actor. Yeah, like, what, criminal. Like, what, like, what in the world are y'all watching? Criminal. Also, quick little shout out to Jake Gyllenhaal in Nightcrawler. Also, what were y'all watching? You didn't see that? Like, I mean, <clears throat> what's wrong with you? You could even throw Miles Teller in there. Because uh, Eddie Redmayne won. I get it. Very physical performance. But it's not like my thing. Uh, Steve Carell, Foxcatcher. Nah. Like, nah. I mean, I, 
I like that movie. Don't love it. Uh, Bradley Cooper, American Sniper. Nah. Benedict Cumberbatch, The Imitation Game. Like, yeah, I could, you know, and, and Michael Keaton for Birdman. I just think like Ray Fiennes like, like destroys all of them. Like, I don't think it's even close. I think there's no competition that year. I think it's the best thing he's ever done. It might be the best performance ever in any Wes Anderson movie. Just felt very like it was up for nine awards and not like that wasn't one of them. <laughs> like that makes that makes zero sense to me. I, I've never Crazy. understood that. And and then in director, like Damon Giselle not nominated for director is like what like, again, what are you what are you doing here? Like I, I love Link Later. I, I I love, you know, Bennett Miller's done some great stuff. Uh Morton T- Tildum for for imitation game. Like I, I mean but like Damien Giselle like made like a like literal diamond, like diamond in the rough with very little little money. And it's it's the most like streamlined, like focused. This is what I'm doing. It's basically a sports movie. It's like this guy versus this guy. Let's fucking go. Pissing contest. Let's see who wins, you know? And like I think movies like that should be rewarded that are like know exactly what they're doing, know exactly what the point of it is. Uh, and I think Damien Giselle to do that in 20 days is fucking nuts. Uh- this movie, I don't know. I don't know if it's controversial now, but Eddie Redmayne, not for me. Not for, not me, for me either. Uh, not for me. I, 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 Connor, I'm not going to speak for you, but I know you, you you like that movie, but I don't think you're like a huge Redmayne guy outside of that movie, right? No, I think he's a he's basically like Paddington Bear come to life. Uh, but I think his performance as Stephen Hawking is mesmerizing. <laughs> but everything, yeah, he, he just has this like little like, you know, oh, I do, I do um, apologize. He's like, He's like a devolved Hugh Grant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and and even the movies that he gets like kind of you know recognized for, it's like I've seen a, a handful of them. But and it's just like, he, it, yeah, it just feels like he's like acting. You know, like it's I'm like actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like all right. Yeah, the, the Danish girl. Yes. He was yeah. he was so right. bad in Jupiter Ascending. I thought that the like Academy should have sent agents to his house to remove that Oscar. What was yeah. the what was the movie he was in? Uh, I saw uh, it was like a Netflix like thing. Trial like of the a- Chicago Seven. No, 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 no. I, that was actually okay. Uh, he he was a uh, the good nurse. Oh, oh, so bad. I could even get so through that. Bad. Like, oh my god. I, I love very, that scene, but that was terrible. Yeah, I very rarely like stop a movie, but I was like, I, I like, I'm good. Like, I rather watch. I, I think I think whenever I did that, I like turn on like a cartoon. Like I turn like like a old like you know fucking kids movie that like doesn't even that, that i don't even hold like to a high esteem just to like just like completely cleanse my palate <laughs> like because yeah. yeah that was that was bad that was really really bad like chastain what are you doing like what make a better choice than that you know like be in connor's david fincher movie for christ's sake not, <laughs> not, not, not fucking the good nurse jesus christ i love her to death but that yeah that, that movie was yeah Damn. i already forgot it yeah anyway yeah we can move on from him yeah I, yeah i just I, yeah i i think the oscars are fascinating because i do love context i do love kind of like pitting things against each other even if i'm not like oh there's a definitive this or that but i do think when you're nominating like a, a nomination to me is is worth almost as much as a win when you look back because you're picking only five out of hundreds of movies right from any, any given year and to watch all of those movies or like the academy seems to do watch like half of a bunch of movies to not have Ray Fiennes is like one of the ultimate criminal, like what on earth were you like, where were you? How did you not see that when they did obviously watch some of the movie when there's nine other nominations, that's the one that, that baffles me the most, you know, there's of course like the do the right thing, losing to, to driving Miss Daisy or, or uh, like broke back, losing to crash or, or social network, losing to King speech. Like those happen. They happen. But at least all of those got nominated. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. at least they got at least they got their foot in the door. Yeah, uh, I hate when I like snub. And like, for me, I've always said this with Connor on Oscar Sunday when we used to do those. If you're gonna call something a snub, you got to pick something to take out. Right? Yes. There's only five spots. Yeah. Yes. Take any of these motherfuckers out yeah. for eight fines. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. care. I don't care who it is. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. I I'd even take Ben Affleck and Gone Girl over half these. You know what I mean? Like, I just uh, it's, it's it's beyond me. But the Giselle not being up for for director. Uh, really bothers me uh he does turn around two years later and win for best director for la la land uh i like that movie i rewatched this past week you know what it's good i'm not like i went back and forth when i saw it in theaters i was like this is incredible and then i watched it at home and i was like ah, this is fine and then like i got really really into jazz and i was like 
a white guy saving jazz is kind of weird. You know, like I get that whole argument and like John Legend like represents everything that's bad with jazz. It's a weird thing. It's a weird decision to have in your movie. But then I watched it again the other night and I was like, I put everything, put my walls down, put everything down. And I was like, this is really entertaining. You know, it's a, it's a very rare glass half full Hollywood, like Hollywood movie. Uh, of course there's those old ones, but nowadays when they make Hollywood movies, it's about how like fucked up it is. Uh, like, like Babylon, uh, another Damon Chazelle movie from 2022 that I also love, but I do think it's cool to kind of see like, Hey, there are good things about like movie making. There's also really shitty things. Uh, I, I like that. You know, it's great. Uh, and of course the outlier of Chazelle's, uh, filmography is first man from 2018. So good. Yeah. Really uh, good. Yeah. Saw that in the, saw that in theaters the same week that, uh, it came out the same week that a star is born came out, which was a massive marketing mistake by everyone, uh, working on first man. Why would you do that? You're gonna you're gonna try to like outdo the Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga, like fourth edition of A Star Is Born, uh, where there's like singing and it's you know like people are gonna go out to the theater to see it for, for this like astronaut movie that's like really slow and really methodical, just bad. But the movie I saw those I saw those back to back in theater. I, I saw them I saw them two days uh, like yeah. on separate days, but yeah, I saw them that that weekend. I think it was like the first weekend of September of 2018. But I re I rewatched First Man at home and I was like, man, this is good. Like this is really good. It it shows a completely different side of Chazelle. Uh, he didn't write that movie, so like show like a director side where he's like, I can work with other people. I can like do this, do that. I can obviously work with Ryan Gosling really well. Yeah, uh, show, show a different side of Gosling too. Show a different side of Gosling. Like Jason Clark is so good in that movie. I love Jason Clark. Uh, and I thought I was like, man, he is incredible in this. Uh, I just completely forgot how solid it was like all the way through uh it made me kind of maybe kind of look at chazelle's four movies and i'm like this is pretty damn good like he's done a great job and he's not even 40 yet so you know buckle up if you don't like the guy he's going to be around for a very very long time uh i do think babylon is a step back for him as far as financial backing goes uh it, it flopped it did not do very well at the theaters and it, it cost a lot of money extremely ambitious i loved it but it has so many flaws and so many chaotic things going on. It just didn't quite work for everyone. So uh, we do need those movies. We need those divisive movies. And I'd like to see him take another go at something like that. But I would expect him to go like a more traditional route for like his next movie. Um, but I'm going to see it. You know, I'm going to see it in theaters because I've seen all of them in theaters and I've enjoyed all four of them on different levels. Uh, but Giselle, for you guys, we've, we've all seen all of his movies. Connor, where, where are you at? Obviously, Whiplash is one. What what's your other three? What's your ranking? Um, pretty much release order. One is Whiplash, two is La La Land, three is First Man, four is Babylon. Okay, Adam, I would I, I have the same, but I'd switch two and three. Oh, so Babylon's last for both of y'all. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh man, yeah. Babylon would be two for me. First Man, La La Land, last. But uh, yeah, again, I like them all. You know, they're all. I think they're all fun. Whiplash would be would be lower if randomly an elephant just took a huge shit on J.K. Simmons' head. I love love that scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Babylon is is an, is absurd. I was, about to, really... I was about to make the joke of like that happens in First Man, right? But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's weird yeah. if that was like the recurring theme of all four of his movies. <laughs> randomly, an elephant just shit on somebody. <laughs> I, I think I think I think what he's like what he's really good at. And it goes goes to show like his decision making for like other people that work with him is all of his movies are edited really well. Like there's time jumps, there's this, there's that. You know, uh, like La La Land like covers like all, like pretty much a whole year. Whiplash clearly covers like a whole year, like a school year in the, in the summer uh, at the end of the movie. First Man covers like a decade, and it's pretty seamless the way it does it. And Babylon covers like also seven eight years. Well, it's a testament to the film that it beat Boyhood for film editing. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. That's you know, that's a yeah. ten-year project. And twenty days, yeah. So much footage, and this is a twenty-day production about jazz, and it was like no contest. <laughs> <Yes>. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I like Giselle a lot, man. I'm I'm excited to see like where else his 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 career goes. Uh, so he's 39 right now. So yeah, this movie comes out when he yeah he's like, he's like 30. He was the youngest. Uh, he's or he is the youngest best director winner of all time. La La Land. He was 32 years old. That's insane, mm. insane. I'm like, I, I'd imagine winning best director. You're that's how old you are. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty, yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, I can't really. Not, not, yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, like imagine, yeah, imagine like 
being on that stage and like Brad Pitt's like, hey man, yeah, like yeah. that's just in, that's just insane. Like what a dream. Uh, but yeah, this movie rules. We're gonna do some categories for it. We're gonna change up kind of our 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 strategy here. And instead of doing a draft, we're gonna kind of go over each category together. Uh, pretty much as one, we're gonna try to figure out like what we think are like the best or our favorite moments. Uh, from 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 the movie, we still are gonna do our our traditional categories of of scene performance uh music and and quotes so i i want to start with scene because i think that'll open the floodgates the best to kind of have like a broader discussion about the movie then we can kind of go to the intricacies of the performances the quotes uh the music so y'all cool with that yeah yep all right so scene uh adam let's start with you like what what to you i'll word it this way if you're if you're at home and like or, or say you come over say you come over and, and like I'm watching Whiplash, what's the scene you hope I'm watching when I when you come over and you're like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, I guess I'll watch the rest of this movie. Well, yeah, I mean, we're get that way. Yeah, I mean, that makes it sound like yeah, I don't know. I, this this might that might change my answer a little bit, but um, on this rewatch, I think this is the third or fourth time I've seen it. Uh, this rewatch, I it was the last one, the last one that stood out to me. And and okay, the, see, that's a great answer. Like yeah. you you come over, you park. And you're like, oh, the last 15 minutes? Fuck yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, it, it, yeah, and, and there's lingering questions about, like, what is the movie stance on, like, it, like are they landing on, obviously, you know, I guess, to, yeah, to paint the picture, like, the scene we're talking about is the performance where he gets kind of called in to replace this, like, drummer in this thing. So Fletcher has been kind of booted from the school, and uh, yeah. but he still was, you know, he's working in this in this industry. Obviously, he's, he's very talented um, at what he does. So he's conducting this group that... Um, what is it called JBC? Um, the JBC, yeah, the JBC, classic. Um, who's playing, and they get him to drum, and he, you know, yeah. Obviously, there's all sorts of like personal stuff between him and Fletcher, and and Fletcher kind of tries to like psych him out right at the beginning. Does uh, obviously he leaves him without you know the music. Uh, has no idea what the, what what they're going to perform. Um, and then eventually turns into this like kind of virtuous performance. After he kind of has a moment with his dad, he comes back out. Um, very dramatic. I mean, obviously, it's it's one of those things. Like I think an audience member probably be like, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> like with this drummer. Like he goes from like totally screwing up to like leaving to coming back and then putting on this like you know iconic kind of drum performance where he kind of gets one over on Fletcher. So is the movie telling us, Hey, look, I know this was like wrong about how, you know, how he went about some of this stuff, but in the end, Fletcher was right. Like he drove him to greatness or is it saying, Hey, despite all this stuff, like this guy's own will and talent and ability and drive overcame Fletcher's nonsense. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the movie's like real theme on it, a real, real take on it is. Um, but it leaves you where you could probably, ascertain a couple different things from that so uh yeah. i really like that and then obviously it's just really well shot and, and miles teller's phenomenal in it, and, and jk Simmons is phenomenal in it um and it's really really well crafted like just like how it's shot the paul riser bit you know where he's like, kind of like looking through the door at one point um Ugh. all that kind of stood out to me i thought that was that was the scene that kind of you know, jumped out to me this time this time watching i think i think the, the tendency is to, you want to do the, the rushing dragging scene which is incredible it's iconic and it plays in like the oscar reel it totally makes sense that it does um but this time this one jumped out to me more the last one. Oh yeah I, yeah I i think this is one of the coolest endings ever uh this triumphant triumphant thing you know yeah the paul riser shot in between the doorways like oh my god how about how about heat check performance you know of course jk is great and miles is great but the guy playing stand-up bass is like the fuck you doing man yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's so he's so good he's like god damn this guy's insane <laughs> he's completely lost his mind uh yeah it's it's incredible just going from him fucking him over like i know you did you think i'm fucking stupid and he you know and he says we're playing up swinging and Miles Teller's like, oh dear God, like he just, yeah, he, he just, tra he's trying to, like, he, he's breaking me right now. And then him come back out and like, caravan, I'll bring you in. <laughs> you know, just, bah, bah, bah. it's like such a cool, cool moment. Uh, of, the, of the tables turning. Yeah, it's great. The table's turning. But, but like he said, you know, and Connor and I have always discussed this anytime we talk about this movie is there is no, it's great. There is no answer. You can interpret it differently every time you watch it. And it, it it's proven that because Connor and I have both seen it so many times. Where every time we're like, I don't know, man. I, like, I think he's right. And then the other time we're like, man, this guy's a fucking monster, <laughs> you know. But the truth is, they're both true. Like, I, I obviously disagree. Obviously, we all disagree with the, the, the things he says and the way, like, to get to that result. But the result happens, right? The result happens. He becomes a freak of nature. He plays one of the coolest solos that we've ever seen, you know, in movie history. Maybe not in music history, <laughs> but as far as like this this art form goes. 
it's a really, really cool moment of him, you know, kind of becoming, becoming that. And you have my favorite shot of that is when JK Simmons is like shaking his head and he does the, like, like he grabs his mouth, like dear God, like yeah. I had no, I didn't know I was going to conjure this, you know? And he does, he, he still has, he's still playing. He's he, that's his puppet. And he's like, come on, bring it back up. Like bring it back yeah. up. And then he brings the horns back in. Like he's still the master of what's going on. Um, even though he's kind of like, you know, doing the action of drumming and it's, it's Neiman who's, you know, doing the action. It's still, it was all because of JK. Like, I'm like, I, I'm going to break you. You like, you fucking weasel. <laughs> like All the names he calls him, the slapping, everything that he does leads to this moment of, of, of really just magic movie making. So, uh, and, and a great music moment. I, I think, I think it's fantastic. And I know Connor, you, you feel, feel pretty similar. It's an amazing sequence, um, especially I know this is the first time I noticed almost a definitive answer to what happens at the end of this movie. The look on Miles Teller's face when it's over is not a like, fuck you face. It's a did I do good face? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And I, that to me says Fletcher won right there. Yeah. Fletcher oh, yeah. Fletcher, owned this yeah. fucker forever. He created and molded his own bird. And that's all he ever wanted. Uh, but goddamn, is it is it? It's executed so perfectly. My the the Paul Reiser shot through the door is my favorite shot of the movie because it's oh. it's a moment where he's like, I didn't realize how big a deal this was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's yeah. just got this look of like, holy shit, that's my son doing that. I, ugh, it's fantastic. Uh, man. Yeah, Paul Reiser is excellent in this movie. Did you guys ever uh, look up the uh, video of Buddy Rich playing Caravan? Oh yeah. I love Buddy Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. I, before I saw this movie, I thought drumming seemed fairly easy. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah. I I yeah, I've apologized to a lot of friends for that. Yeah, there there's that there's that whole saying. I think at one point it's on like a po- a poster in his his room. It's like those who can't drum jazz drum rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, fucking it's, a, beautiful. it's just a completely different animal you know it's a completely different um and of course chazelle is like clearly obsessed and justin Hurwitz, like these guys are obsessed with jazz like uh la la land obviously features it heavily and sebastian is like a jazz purist and has the whole scene my favorite scene in la la land is when he's like takes mia takes emma stone to watch jazz like at a real club at the lighthouse and he's like he's like look it's it's compromise it's chaos like it's all happening at once. Like it's live. Like it's the only like live thing that's like happening in music. Like no matter what it's new, it's fresh every time. Uh, like, yeah. I mean like buddy rich, like completely, completely like rep, like represents that. Like he's a freak, <laughs> a freak on the kid. He's crazy, dude. Like caravan is a, a wonderful song. So like, I love that they choose that. Of course, like the na- name of the movie is whiplash and they play. You know, all right, gang whiplash. I love I love that that song, but I love that they choose Caravan to be like the finishing piece. It's such a such a kick ass song. Yeah, it's the expert level. If you can play Caravan the way Andrew plays Caravan, you yeah, for life, you have earned the respect of this community. Yeah. All right, Neiman, you earned the part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alternates, can you clean yeah. the blood off my drum set? Uh. So. <laughs> yeah, Those God. who can't drum rock and roll teach gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nice, very nice. <laughs> Little nepotism. <laughs> I, I sat on that for a second. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we're thinking about a future episode. Uh, sure are. So, sure are. So, I, I would I would point out that, like, to me, there's three like th- the three scenes that are like like super intense, and I, yeah, definitely that one, the finale. Uh, the of course the the Sean Casey, like when he does the speech about Sean Casey, like, oh, I had a student. He was a beautiful player. And he lies about how he died. Uh, he's like, oh, he died in a car accident yesterday. And he's like, I just want y'all to know he's a beautiful player. And then moments later, he's screaming at these three drummers, like screaming. Like, he's like, you kind of look like a fucking leprechaun, you know, just like saying nasty stuff. These guys, I'm going to call you Flannery. <laughs> like uh, J.K. Simmons is like, finally, like someone wrote something that I like, I can like conjure up every great thing that I can do as an actor and, and put it all right here. Like he, he's doing like Pacino de niro like crazy stuff in this movie like the stuff he gets to scream that one and the squeaker scene the first time uh, we have a squeaker you know uh like isn't he cute you know 19 years old like that initial like 
and then he does the kind of like okay not quite my tempo like that fucking thing yeah he does that, with his hand I, that's so fucking i love that that's kind of you know kind of the beginning of the movie where you're like okay this is this is gonna yeah this has become mono e mono like me me and you i'm i live to impress you like i live to you know get your approval i love when paul reiser says that like, like this guy's approval like really matters to you he's yeah it does like the cards are on the table there's no like hiding like what's going on here like but neiman wants so badly for fletcher to be like you're my guy you're the best drummer i have uh it, it's it's incredible so he wants to I hear to... the two words he'll never fucking say which is good job good job yeah great job buddy yeah so yeah those to me like stand out for sure but uh connor is there anything else that like any like you know major or broad scene that you, you feel like deserves a shout the whole sequence where um, Neiman forgets his sticks and gets in oh. a car accident and shows up with a broken hand to do the to, to play and fucks it all up. And yeah. Fletcher has no sympathy. Fletcher's just like, there you are. You fucked it up. You're done. And Neiman freaks out and jumps on him. And it's just that, that whole thing is executed so well. It's like a Rube Goldberg of like bad mistakes that turns into this giant confrontation. Yeah, and, I, I, mean, I have one qualm with that, though, like. There, there is a point though. Like, I, like, I understand. I mean, it, it makes it makes for great like storytelling. But like, there is a point where he would have just he would have just had one of the other guys do it. Like, I, like, like he's literally not on stage. Like, I, I don't know. Like, that was my one thing. It's like it, it's almost like it goes on a tad too long. Because like you see the clock at one point. It's like it says seven twenty eight, and it's like there's no way he's like getting back there. So it's like that would I just don't think that would be like allowed for him like literally run onto the stage. It's like already going. It's like that was kind of like okay. But the the yeah. The way it's shot and sequenced in terms of just like the rental car, the like the bus. And you when you first like the bus is first stop, you can tell he's kind of like, Oh, this is like fine, this is not a big deal. And then he's like, Oh, this is like like I'm not gonna make it. Like I and he's like, Oh, I gotta call this. I get this, I can't get a taxi here. Like all that stuff, like that part too is like really well done. And then the wreck comes out of nowhere. I almost <laughs> had kind of forgotten about it. I was like, Well, I forgot how like violent this was. Like, like the wreck, it's not just like a little, you know, fender bender where he has to start running. I forgot, like it's like yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I hadn't seen it in a couple of years. So um yeah, that that is a really crazy sequence, all because yeah, and, and the little the little shot of it, like just real quick, like seeing like oh he left him this, you know, left him the chair. So we know like he's not gonna have yep. you know he's back. But yeah, it's really good movie making. Yeah, yeah, that and that that yeah, that that creates some of the best quotes of the movie, like fuck off, John Utah, turn my pages, bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Such a good good line. I love that, and I also love when uh, and I know like, I have my theories about what happened, but when the charts get lost, oh, um, the folder, yeah, yeah, and uh, Tanner, the the like shorter shortest drummer, is like, "You dumb fuck! You're a dumb fuck!" <laughs> you know, yeah. he's, like, he's like, "What the fuck? Like, are you kidding me?" Like, he's freaking out or whatever, and he's like, "Well, <laughs> you get a calculator to a <laughs> you get a calculator to a retard. He's gonna try to turn a TV on with it." You're like, oh my god! Like, just when you think, anytime you think J.K. Simmons is like outdone himself, you're like, no, he comes with an even more offensive and fucked up quote <laughs> than yeah. the last. <laughs> oh, it's so it's so brutal, but it, it's like you can't help but just kind of like your your jaw just drops every time J.K. opens his mouth. So I love well, that and, scene. And, I love and that I scene. Chuckle. I chuckle at times, not not at like the expense of like the people he's making fun of, but just like that there's someone this outrageous. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, it's like yes. oh my gosh, it's just like, that is such a crazy thing to say. It's like I'm not like oh haha, like let me let, laugh at someone who's you know like has any sort of you know challenge or anything. It's like that's not it. It's it's just like this is nuts. This guy's crazy. I mean, that's it's almost like that's the only reaction you can have is just to be like, oh my goodness, like it's, it's a less, horrified laughter. Yeah, it's less like oh that was funny and more like I can't believe I just fucking heard that. Yes. 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 Yeah. No, it's very, it's very, it's like the opposite end of like Michael Scott in The Office, where you're like, what a fucking moron, you know? Whereas yeah. this guy, it's like, what a monster. Like, what a absolute, like, like dictator, basically. He's just insane. So I have, I have a family member who refuses to watch this movie. Like, they watched it the first time and they were so horrified because it brought back some seriously traumatic childhood mm-hmm. memories of bullying and they will not, they will not watch it again. Like this oh, is I a bet, great horror, horror movie one. for that person. Yeah, I bet they're not the only one. That's that's probably true for a few people. It's a very oh triggering God. movie. I mean, you can just feel it, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nasty. Like, absolutely not. His character Fletcher is is yeah is, which is, uh, I guess my uh, is my last shout out would be this is like a good way to kind of bleed into like another side of his character is the scene at the club when he's playing piano like towards towards the end when Neiman is walking down with like the piece of pizza. And he like sees, you know, with special guest Terrence Fletcher and Terrence Fletcher is playing this 
like beautiful song and he's like a beautiful piano player you know though just the way his hands move on, on the keys you know you're like what <laughs> that's 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 the guy who says like it's not your boyfriend's dick do not come early you know like that's that guy you know like it's incredible it's like music shows like a when you play versus like who you are like it just shows like a completely different side of you and that scene to me is like is so good it's such a crucial crucial part of the movie because we're wondering what is the method to the madness you know like what is his reasoning for all of this you know uh and so i I think i think like obviously there's a lot of quotes from this movie that you know that are like hard to repeat but i mean the screenplay this what (laughs) i'm ready (laughs) yeah the the screen the screenplay is is just lights out and i i I do think we should you know take some time to just kind of like shout out some quotes and so for me like bleeding that scene that uh that like club scene when he's like neiman like he catches him like clearly they're like dr- having a drink together and they're talking and like neiman thinks that fletcher doesn't know because it was anonymous that like he got fired from from schaefer so it's kind of this like uh like i know that you know that you know but you don't know it's like a really interesting game being played between the two but the dialogue in that scene is great it's it's a really cool a bit where Fletcher gets to kind of like show off his jazz passion and show off like why he, why he does what he does. And he says, uh, I don't think people understood what it was, what I was doing at Schaefer. I wasn't there to conduct any fucking moron can wave his arms and keep people in tempo. I was there to push people beyond what's expected of them. I believe that is an absolute necessity. Otherwise we're depriving the world of the next Louis Armstrong, the next Charlie Parker. I told you that story about how Charlie Parker became Charlie Parker, right? Andrew says, yeah, Joe Jones threw a symbol at his head. Terrence. Exactly. Parker's a young kid, pretty good on the sax, gets up to play at a cutting session, and he fucks it up. And Jones nearly decapitates him for it. And he's laughed off stage. Cries himself to sleep that night. But the next morning, what does he do? He practices. He practices, and he practices, and he practices, with one goal in mind, to never be laughed at again. And a year later, he goes back to the Reno, and he steps, off of that, steps onto that stage and plays the best motherfucking solo the world has ever heard. So imagine if Jones had just said, well, that's okay, Charlie. That was all right. Good job. And then Charlie thinks to himself, well, shit, I did do a pretty good job. End of story. No bird. That, to me, is an absolute tragedy. But that's just what the world wants now. People wonder why jazz is dying. <laughs> Man, like, Damien Giselle, dude. That's <laughs> such a sick, sick line of dialogue. Like, it shows off the passion, but also kind of, like, the gray section of, like, this whole movie. Uh, I just, I love that scene to death. Yeah, it does. It brings up some questions, you know, like, your loyalty shift an uncomfortable amount in this movie. Uh, Cause you know, obviously you don't want to be the guy being like, well, you know, the more you get screamed at, the better you play. That's not true. <laughs> but also like, he's got a good point. You know, when you face utter humiliation and it doesn't break you, it just, you know, builds you up stronger. Like we, the world is better for it, but that's not the norm. That's an incredibly rare situation. The, the the norm is the fucking suicide that Fletcher's responsible for. So like you know, yeah. is it worth like twenty suicides to get one genius? No, no, no. not at no. all. Not and, at all. No, and that's and that's where I my I, I and even this time even more so. Maybe just the more years I do this and the more people I hopefully impact and stuff like that. I my allegiances didn't shift at all this time. I I pretty much saw him as a monster almost one hundred percent of the time. There's a couple little moments where he's humanized a little bit. I think Austin, you pointed out like when he's playing, you can tell there's like a little yeah. bit of a, of a freedom there. He feels at peace while playing. I do like that. Um, but he immediately goes into manipulation mode immediately he's talking yep. to talking to like, he can't talk to people younger than him. He is in such a position of power over these kids and he is abusing it constantly. Like, like, um, like almost the entire time he has a couple moments of like actual inspiration and then everything else is just a monster. And it's like, I like to me, the end does not justify the means on anything he does. Like there's not a single time where I'm like, well, I, that makes sense. Cause he got that result. The result is not worth it. If that's how you have to get it. And to me, that's a sign of weakness in him that's a sign of i'm actually not that great of a teacher because this is the only way i can get results like i'm not i don't know how to relate to a bunch of people it's just my way or the highway that's one way to skin a cat but that's not you are going to be limit yourself and how much you can actually impact i i was like yeah i left it thinking like man i i'm i'm even more uh like grounded in how i approach things after you know seeing this and and there there are people listening to this i'm sure or even people who like 
teach or coach or do whatever, or like try to inspire people that like probably totally disagree with me. And there's a, there's a big kind of like thing in like the basketball world. Austin, you'll understand this, like the kind of like Mamba mentality, you know, Kobe, like screw everybody else. Like, um, uh, friends come and go, but banners hang forever. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that is just, that's so, um, I don't know. That sounds cool on a quote on a thing with like a little highlight playing, but that's, that's such a shitty way to treat people. And I think it's just like not worth it at all. You know, like I came from, I just had some stuff this afternoon with some, some of the, the kids I coach. And then I, I mean, I was like leaving the gym. I was headed home. And one of the girls that I trained called me. She said, Hey, there's a few of us volunteering at this thing. Do you want to come by and just like hang out for a little bit? I did. And it turned into like multiple meaningful conversations with multiple people that, that were there. And it's like, that to me is, is how you actually get across to people. Like, like Fletcher is not a guy that they're going to call. You know what I mean? Like to have like a meaningful conversation because it's like, he's just going to, he's just going to berate them. So it's like, there, there's no, no, there's, there's the one moment where he is talking to that one kid yeah, uh, in the hallway. And that may be, that was like a sign that, okay, like for some people that it didn't totally break them. Like, um, and he doesn't treat everyone horribly, but, well, but there are, there now are some. because they've, he's already turned them into his band. True. Yeah. So yeah, I guess, I guess maybe we just haven't seen it. Right. We yeah. Just haven't seen it. yeah. But there's, there's, there's a fear of this guy rather than like a respect to me. And it's like, there's some people that would say that I'd rather be feared than like respected or it's like, ah, like that is a big ass red flag to hear from somebody. Yeah, I'm just like, that's not, <laughs> yeah. that's not good. That's not, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And the, even, even the thing too, like I, I, I didn't say the, the mom mentality thing, like it's like shit on Kobe. I, I don't think, I actually think he got better at that as he got older in his career. I actually think he turned into like, you listen to Pal Gasol and the way he talked about him, the way that they, they had a friendship. Like, I think he actually morphed his thinking a little bit into being like, oh, okay, actually like, it's not going to just like drive people into the ground and like, yeah, but like the marketing like, yeah. was the marketing. It's all. Yes. Yes. You know. And it's like people, people are confusing the mom mentality. It's like, Oh, that just means I get to be an asshole and like treat my teammates like horribly. And it's like, Oh, but, the, but like mama mentality. And it's like, no, no, no. I like, that's not, that's not how this should, this should work. So um, no, I, I again had so many thoughts about this movie, but that one, I, I never really, my allegiance never really lied with him. It pretty much always was like, Hey, this, this guy's just a monster, you know? Well, that's, yeah. That, that tells yeah. me that you're a good coach. <laughs> well, I think it tells me it tells you that I like care about my people, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I I do think I I you know I know what I'm talking about. I, I've helped a lot of people, but like I think I also what I have to show for it is okay. I don't have like all these like NBA players that I've like turned you know kids into, or like these people that are just like these crazy driven, over the top, you know, uh, maniacal like money hungry like success people. But I I have relationships that have lasted like a decade after people like after I coach them. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. I, we still talk. We still talk about stuff. It's like they still know that I'm in their corner kind of no matter what. Um, I talk about like really serious stuff with some of the kids I, I work with person like right now. And then also that people I've worked with in the past. So I don't know if I'm like some, you know, genius basketball wise, but I do know I'm relating to people and helping them through things and they've helped me a ton. So it's like, there are people that are in my life because of people I've either coached with or coached that have like helped me out at different points. So like, I, I don't, yeah, I do think that is what I have to show for. And that's, that to me is really meaningful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. 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 I mean, this, to, to me, to me, the only way that you can justify like speaking down to someone is if they like, they ask for it. If they're like, I, I like say, right. say, right. say like, right. say, say he's doing like a session, like at the beginning of the movie, and he's like, show me your rudiments, stop that, you know, but whatever. If he says, when it's me and you, I want you to berate me. I want you to like look down on me. I want you to uh, you know, like just tear me to tear me down because that's what gets me going. Like that's what gets me, you know, that gives me drive or whatever to, to like play better. I think, I think that's fine. I think that's okay. Like, or if like, uh, you know, if a basketball trainer, football trainer, whoever it is, is doing a one-on-one thing and the player is like, I don't want you to be nice to me for one second. Like I want you to like scream at me, like get me like to the best possible shape or best player that I can possibly yeah. be. That can work for some people, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. if they don't ask for it, I just don't think there's like a, I don't think there's a green light to just do that to anyone. Well, and, and I want to be clear the the, I, there's parts of the good job speech that I actually agree with. I do think we are like uh, way too, way I totally, too, totally yeah. agree. Yeah, yes. totally agree. You're way too like, oh, it's okay. Good job, buddy. It's like, no, no, that wasn't. But the point is I build the relationship first with the person so that when the time comes, when I need yep. to tell them that wasn't good enough, they, they trust me and they believe me. And so when I tell them that they're like, okay, this guy actually has my best interest at heart. I will listen to this. That probably was not good enough. And I, I trust me, there are lots of times where I tell somebody that wasn't good enough, you know, uh, like, and it doesn't have to be harsh. It doesn't have to be screaming. I can just pull a kid aside and be like, Hey man, like I I've seen you play much better. Like that you, you can give way more than you're giving right now. That's all it takes yeah. Yeah. But it's because I've developed the relationship, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah, Correct. you're not you're not going you're not going to a kid and going here comes Mr. Gay Pride of the Upper West Side. Yeah, I mean that's, again that's one where, where we laughed, but it was just like oh my god, like yeah, getting away with that, like <laughs> crazy thing to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. trust it's is so definitely big. the missing element that Fletcher does not have nor care about. He doesn't care. Yeah, and yeah, yeah I, and there's really like I mean yeah he gets fired, but there really aren't any real consequences for him. Right, right, right. He's yeah. still, he's still like revered in the yeah. jazz community. The he's New York still jazz opening community. the JVC fest. Like he's still yeah. somebody. Yeah. 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 I, I love, I love that line at the end of the movie before the JVC, before that show. And he says, here's some of the be- best musicians in New York. So therefore the, some of the best musicians in the world. He's like, Oh, mm-hmm. that's such a big balls. Like, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> No, he turns oh. on. He's able to turn on this kind of like charm every once in a while. And this kind of, you know, like, and even even that little dinner with Andrew. But to me, that, that's all manipulative. It's not all. It's all. It it's, is. It's, it's mostly fake. I mean, it's well, just the, like. The, the, yeah, the line, uh, a little a little avant-garde from the rhythm section. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> such a good. Uh, I mean, it's, it's JK. It's JK. It's JK Simmons. Like, God, he, he's is, just unbelievable in this movie. He's he, unbelievable. He, it was it was in him his whole career. And he finally like got that like golden role. He won, I think, I think the number is like close to 50 awards he won during award season at like very obviously various things and like swept literally every single thing you could possibly win as an actor for best supporting. I mean, and like rightly so. Like it might be the best supporting yes. role ever. <laughs> like, yeah, total, be, and total award award mount is 40. He won 40 accolades. 40. Okay. 40. For like, just this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's won nothing else. You know, like, I, I mean just insane it's insane what he what he did uh in, in this role and and obviously he's in it a lot so he's like a heavy supporting supporting a uh, actor but but he is yeah he's, he's the second second guy he's the villain so and the best villain of the 2010s by in, in my opinion uh yeah he's it's great his, it's his movie to me yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> we will have to Oh, he's great. Teller's great, and he learned he learned to play drums like over like a five month span to like look like he knows what he's doing. He, like, he's obviously not like an amazing jazz drummer, but like he's he, he to like the blind eye or like someone who you know the naked eye, someone who doesn't really know jazz is like he's pretty good. You know, like this oh, guy's yeah. pretty good, yeah. uh, and it's like convincing. Uh, I love. We will not be serving cosmopolitans and baked Alaska. <laughs> yeah. So just play fast, and you give give fucking hand jobs. <laughs> Oh, uh, any, any other qu- Connor l- unleash, dude? Like, let's hear it. What are your favorite quotes? Uh, well, I sent one to you guys earlier just to <laughs> prep you up for this one. Um, it's right before the you know first competition, and Fletcher's this is his pep talk. <laughs> um, everybody remember Lincoln Center and its ilk use these competitions to decide who they are interested in and who they are not. And I am not going to have my reputation in that department tarnished by a bunch of fucking limp dicks, sour note, flatter than their girlfriends, flexible tempo dipshits. Got it? Uh-huh. You, pansy, you pansy ass fruit fuck. Fucking roast master general, this guy. Like, uh, geez, imagine if he used his powers for good. Yeah, yeah, I know. I Yeah, I love the... Uh... Uh, you are a worthless, friendless little piece of shit whose mommy left daddy when she figured out he wasn't Eugene O'Neill. <laughs> that was a great line. Yeah. And who is now weeping and slobbering all over my drum set like a fucking nine-year-old girl. So the, for the final bother fucking time, say it louder. <laughs> I'm upset. Uh, yeah. Earlier, I love when Fletcher's just blatantly mining him for information he can use for that insult. Oh, dude. Yeah. Great yeah. scene. Great. Oh, so you're the only musician in your family. Oh, okay. Again, but just like monstrous. Like just such yeah. a just manipulate, 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 manipulate. You know what I mean? Like none of it's real. None of it is like I actually care about you. Let me like don't yeah, worry just... about what those other guys are doing. It's like yeah. just in his eyes, you can <laughs> see the emptiness, like the lack of a soul. It's yeah. fucking great. No, I I... <laughs> and every time I watch this movie, like I, I mean, I hate that I'm like just cackling, but I can't, like, I can't. Like, I can still fucking see you, mini me, because <laughs> I see I see J.K. Simmons' career. Like you see Jameson, you see uh, yep. uh, his character in Oz, uh, Schrödinger, or how do you say it? Uh, I watched that show in like ten years. Uh, he, I mean, he plays like a Nazi rapist in that movie, and so like, yeah. or in that in that show, that, that yeah, HBO okay. show, which which is a great show, but like he's a fucking monster, and so you're wondering like where like. 
well, it's it's gonna come back, isn't it? And it comes back tenfold <laughs> in Whiplash. Like he he brings every like brings the juice. I love the the out of tune bit is uh-huh. like un, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I, so I have that. I have that. Yeah, for the record, Mets or for the record, Mets wasn't out of tune. You were Erickson, but he didn't know, and that's bad enough. Yeah. Like, all those little yeah. mind games like that. It's like that poor guy. It's like he actually was he was doing a good job. He just, just like yeah. He just, <laughs> that is yeah, just, yeah, Mets, yeah. Met, met, yeah, Mets like this poor, this poor kid. Like <laughs> he's like, Do you think you're out of tune? What are you? There's there's no fucking Mars bars down there. What are you looking at? Oh, Look up yeah. here. Look at me. Don't think do you think you're out of tune? And Mets like says reluctantly, like, yes. <laughs> then why didn't you fucking say so? I've carried your fat ass for far too long, Mets. I'm gonna have. I'm not gonna have you cost us a competition because your mind's on a fucking happy meal instead of being on pitch, <laughs> dude. dude. Horrible. I mean, absolutely <laughs> horrible. But you just. I mean, I feel like. I feel like. Like, there's stuff said like this, like in the in the arts world, you know, that like we like don't aren't allowed to see. And it was like Damon Giselle was like, I'm gonna like mic up the dirtiest, nastiest like version of a conductor, director, whatever you know, what have you, like master of the room. And, and like you're gonna be able to like see all, like it's a tell all. This is how they really are. I'm sure there's monsters out there, all, you know, all over the place, right? Like especially in colleges where like kids, they're they don't want to go cry to mom and dad because they're like, I'm in college now, like I'm a big, you know, this is like I got into Schaefer, but they also like don't want to stand up to him. You know, it's like a weird place to be as like a college student. I'm sure like you can't like if you did this at a high school. Oh, I mean, every every kid is telling on you, right? Well, but, yeah. Well, and like when you're someone in- here, oh, you just threw something at the wall? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Someone's going to come in and be like, what was that noise? Yeah. Oh, nothing? Yeah. 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 Don't oh, worry or, about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is obviously very extreme. But but for there is like a believable aspect where it's like these kids are so like scared of him, but also seek his approval. It's like the perfect balance. Like he is the master manipulator. So, well, you like you like kind of know- believe it. He knows they need him because, you know, the yeah. other the other music class is a joke. That's, you know, you get your, you know, associate's degree in music and then you go do something else with it. But th- this is a you want a career. This is all you care about. You need him. And he knows that. So he he abuses the fuck out of that because you know, a his journey to find a Charlie Parker, but also he gets off on it. He clearly gets off on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, the stuff he, he says, like. Uh, you know, like I'm gonna drum your ass back to NASA uh, before you either graduate or drop out. I'm gonna give a shit. You know, like I mean, yeah, he. It's like Bert. Did you write all this stuff down? <laughs> Where did you come up with this shit? <laughs> uh, it, like the shit. It's just off the top of his head. The 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 most creative insults I've ever heard. And, and nastiest. I mean, like there's, if you there's something sabot- weird. It's it's like weird, but there's something to admire there. Yeah, it, yeah, no, it's like a stand-up comedian just being able to like, oh, boom, 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 like, I like this is my this is my routine, you know. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will fuck you like a pig. <laughs> here's a, here's another here's another quick one uh, that did, you know a philosophical you know uh, quibble of mine. Uh, Andrew asked him, but there is a, uh, but uh, but is there a line? You know, maybe you go too far, you discourage the next Charlie Parker from ever becoming Charlie Parker. No, man, no, because the next Charlie Parker would never be discouraged. I mean, I just like fundamentally disagree with that. It's like, no, you definitely have lost people who could have been just there or maybe possibly the next Charlie Parker that like just need a little bit of tweaking. You Again, you're only like, he's only looking at it through the prism of like the way he knows how to communicate and the way he knows how to uh, <laughs> motivate. Not like there actually yeah. are different ways of motivating so you, because there are other people who have gotten as good or just as close to as good as Charlie Parker. And maybe they're motivated by something different. Like maybe someone actually could get through to them. Like there are different ways to lead. There are different ways to kind of generate talent. Yeah. Uh, I, it's yeah. like, yeah, he's it's like ignoring every other way he could possibly do. It's like, no, no, no. He would like, that would never happen. He would never get discouraged. Like, yeah, but like he very easily could have like, <laughs> like Andrew has an ab- is absolutely right on that, in, that, in that regard. It's like, yeah, there is a line for sure. There is a line. It's the Monsters yeah. Inc. approach, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Laughter is more powerful than scream. Yeah, yeah. There is something to that. Yeah, it depends on the person, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm a writer. If I, you know, if I got something published or like worked with an agent who just constantly said that like what I do is bullshit, it's terrible, it's never going to work. Eventually, I'm going to be like, well, if I, you know, maybe I should stop. It's going to break me. Cause that's, you know, something that I care about very much and, you know, want to be good at. So I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I've never been what faced it, with that kind of negative reinforcement. 
And conversely, you, 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 if it was only positive ever, yeah, that would if I get that, be, then that's not helpful either because everyone's just a lie. Yeah, I don't lie. know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so it's like that's what I'm saying, and that's why I want, I want to be clear. It's like no, there, there is absolutely room for correction and sometimes stern correction, like um, with this stuff. But it's like there's no need to like insults. Like there's no need to like berate. You know, no. it's like that's just not. You don't got to break I mean, the guy's spirit. Just give him some guidance. Just tell him yeah. like you screwed up here. Get it right next time. Yeah, you can do that without destroying somebody. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's me. Every time you watch Whiplash, this is this is the. It's exhausting. It's almost like yeah. fuck, like fuck, like. I, like yeah, but it, it it moves so well. I mean, it really. Oh it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's really well paced. Bum 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 bum. Yeah, I mean, it's it's perfect. It's it's a perfect movie. <laughs> it's. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah. It's not only my favorite movie from the 2010s. Like sometimes. I'm like, is this the best thing I've ever seen in my life? You know, it's like one of those, like <laughs> I, I'd, ri- I'd rival it with any decade, any, th- any of the best shit you got out there. Like I'll put wet flesh like right next to it. And, and, you know, like say touche, you know, it's one of those, one of those things that I just think is just, is just fucking electric, you know, it's magic in a bottle. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean the quotes, yeah, obviously there's, there's, there's the, the philosophical stuff. There's the, the like funny, like, you know, borderline <laughs> insane, uh, you know, berating, uh, and there's the, like the jazz references and all that stuff. Uh, but I, I, I mean, th- there's also like really interesting stuff from Neiman. Um, I would say like the scene with, with the girl, there's, there's, there's a couple scenes. Like there's the one where he, they're at, they're at the pizza place and he's like, Bob Ellis on the drums, you know, like that whole bit. And there's the bit where he like explains like, we can't be together, you know, uh, like, and this is why, cause I want to be great. And she's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know? Uh, and then there's the, the, the scene that uh, the best scene that we haven't mentioned yet is the, is that dinner scene with his family. Um, yeah. Uh, come play with us. Four words you won't hear from the NFL. Yeah. It's division <laughs> three, you know, it, I mean, it, it also kind of like puts the movie, like, it, like it makes it really gray. You have the, like, clearly these kind of like two douchey kids who like come from, come from like a much better, like background than, than Andrew does uh, with like his teacher, his, his dad's who's like a high school teacher. Uh, but his dad loves him. You know, his dad like looks up to him like thinks he's the most important thing ever. So that's like what a dad's supposed to do. But at that dinner scene, when his uncle is like, is like, Oh, do you have any friends, Andrew? And he's like, no, I never really, like never really saw the use for them. So not only does Fletcher believe like, eh, whatever, like it doesn't really matter. Like it, all that matters is like being great. Andrew like thinks that already. Like he's already like that's like who he's becoming as like a young adult is like he's already looking up to you know the Buddy Rich and the Charlie Parkers and those guys, Thelonious Monk, these guys who are just like, I don't really care what happens to me. I just want to be great. I want fame. I want people to remember me. And when Paul Reiser, when the dad says, like, uh, dying 34 years old, you know, drunk and full of heroin is not my idea of success. And he's like, I'd rather die drunk, 34 you know, full of heroin, then, uh, be, you know, be, and be mentioned at a dinner table and be nine, yeah. be, then be 90. And like, no one remember my name. And like that right there is like, what, what's worth more to you? <clears throat> of course, I think like a healthy way is like maybe down the middle. <laughs> like it's, it's okay for, to be, to like, want to be liked by people and want to be, be remembered to yeah. want to be remembered or even to be great. It's okay to want to be like, under the radar, do my thing. I want to have a clock in, clock out job, go home, hang out with my family. There's also something really cool about like work ethic and focusing on your, on your career, becoming, becoming, becoming really good at your craft is really cool. And very few people actually do it. So it does not have to come at the expense of everything else in your life. And it doesn't have to come at the cost of dying in your thirties. Right, right, right. But you also don't have to just like, uh, like, like be lazy and like, kind of like have live a forgetful life. You can kind of go down the middle, like, but I do like the line where he's like, ah, but your friends remember you. That's the point. Like the uncle as like annoying as he is, like he has a point. Like that is, those are the people that like will carry your memory and therefore like they pass it down to whoever is behind them, you know, uh, like, that, like that stuff matters. So I just think that's like an incredibly written scene, incredibly gray again, and uh, some like unbelievable delivery from Miles Teller. He's such a prick in that scene. Uh, like justify justifiably in moments, and then other times we're like, dude, you got it wrong. He's a 19 year old. He knows some stuff. He doesn't know some stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's the perfect 19 year old. Like I want to do this thing really bad. I'm gonna go after it, but I also have like don't have my priorities in check. 
Well, in that scene, I I do love you get just from one line of dialogue where Andrew comes from with all this. And it's when they're talking about, you know, the ant is talking about, oh, and they got, you know, accepted into Division three and it's going so well for them. And then just casually. Oh, and Andy, with your drumming. Yeah. yeah. Like yep. He's a second thought. Like they, they don't think he's doing anything that matters. And they've clearly been, you know, you get the sense that like they've been looking down on him and his dad for a long time because they're just this, you know, poor family unit. So Andrew's driven a lot to prove himself to these people specifically. Yeah, they don't they don't get it. They, they don't, don't like they don't get it. They like don't like, get like, it. like a like a lot of, you know, like a lot of parents, uh, you know, that have their kids like play play a sport or whatever. Uh, or, or, or like are academically, you know, like doing super well, go to like this huge college and do this or that or whatever. And like, they, like that's their kid. So that's what's important to them. And fair enough. But they like think this other thing that like this other kid, her nephew is doing is like, I mean, it's not the same as football. It's not the same as like becoming an academic genius. You know, you're just playing drums. Uh, it's like not a means to an end, you know, like. I have, but it, I have tried so hard in my life to never ever ever discourage anybody's creative outlet yeah if you like what you like all the power to you you keep on keeping on you do that and you enjoy it you know i i've always tried very hard to do that because you got yeah, you got to encourage what people you know people to quote a movie upcoming on the film guys and podcast pig we have so little to look forward to in life mm. so mm. when you when somebody has something when somebody has something that's theirs that they believe in don't step on it yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah. they, just, they don't know how to. I mean, yeah, because it's funny because it's like they all, the family kind of all is like, oh, this drumming thing. And his dad even makes a comment like, oh, it's like, you know, like, is that a career, you know, type thing? It's like, but like Division three football is also not a career. Like, when you like, yep. Like, that's like, and they're, they're like fine with that, but that's like a more like acceptable kind of like, oh, cool thing. Like he plays college football, you know. Um, School record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that scene is. And also they criticize, you know, Paul Reiser's character is like cooking and he's like, just kind of takes it, you know, it's like, and that's like pretty sad, you know? Yeah. You, you do get such a glimpse of like kind of where, you know, he comes from and his background and what drives him a little bit too. So, um, and what drives him is pain and that's okay to use pain as like a, a driving force for something positive in your life. Um, but yeah, but the way Fletcher decides to use them is just, it's just wrong. It's just manipulative and and, and wrong and also like vile i mean how, how many i bet i bet someone has counted how many like hr violations i mean straight up uses a a anti-semitic slur like badly at one point like i mean he, he just he just uh yeah <laughs> he's committed so many like indiscretions like how has he not been let go at this point but yeah i mean you, oh yeah you got homophobic slurs you got ableist oh. slurs you've got assault oh. you've got so yeah dudes yeah oh no. yeah <laughs> Yeah, throwing stuff at kids, sla like slip I mean, slapping, like yeah. physical physical harm. Like <laughs> it's, it's insane. And they all like want to play for him. It's crazy. But yeah, yeah. I I, I love that dinner scene. Yeah, great point about Paul well, Reiser. Well, I, he just I, he just takes it. See, I, I question, I mean, I I understand what you mean by it, Austin, but I think I think like um want to play for him. I don't think that's true. I I, I it's it's they yeah, want too what comes from sometimes being in his orbit they don't want to play for him right like like greg pop yeah players want to but play they want to him. they want to be in the studio band yes regardless but, but, of who's 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 because that's where you go that's where you can get a job that's where you go thing. play that's different that's different than wanting to play for him they want to be in the studio band because again what what becomes after that but play well, yeah, for him, which which happens play to for be him is, his band yeah yeah, just, he just has to be in charge of it. But play for him would mean like anywhere he goes, they would want to play for him. You know, it's like that's not like 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 the players who play for Greg Popovich, they want to play for him. Oh well, yeah, he's the furthest thing from Greg Popovich. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 But no, he is he is the master of the school. Like he is yeah. clearly clearly gets away with anything he wants. Uh, the other teacher is just like fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Nassau the Nassau uh, conductor is just like oh dear God like here comes this maniac you know uh, like the way he just barges in like drums yeah. you know uh, he's like oh let's see if your first shirt is because you're cute <laughs> yep it's because you're cute. <laughs> I mean he just the way he barges in the other the conductor is just like whatever like he clearly just does whatever he wants runs the show yeah and yeah I mean yeah it's not him it's 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 the highest level at Schaefer. Therefore it's the highest level in the country. Yeah. It'd be like playing at Alabama, like playing football for Alabama oh, under, no, I get like, it. under a maniac. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I, I get that bit. I'm just saying, yeah, I just, I just think, yeah, that's like the, like 
yeah, there's people I've wanted to play for, and the, yeah, and that's and that this is not this is not somebody you want. Yeah, like <laughs> like yeah, like I'd love you know if I were, if I were like a high level basketball player, I'd love to play for like Roy Williams, but not Bob Knight. Yes. Yes. But might, at the same time, might, like one year under Bob Knight might be kind of cool. I might play at Indiana because of what it what I could get out of it, but I'm not playing for him, you know, like. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's tough. You know, you open up you, you, you the door that we open up again is the like, yeah, like what's the line? You know, like what's like what's the line? Like how well, many great players? How many great players did Bob Knight be, help become even better or even worse? You know what I mean? So yeah, it's like, but he also really but he also cool. almost took away Larry Bird from us. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, almost one of the best players to ever live. Yeah, yeah. and who knows so, how many others that we don't know about, right? Right? Like, who, who knows he, how many people? Yeah, he discouraged. We almost didn't get Larry Bird because he was incapable of doing anything any different way. Yeah, and like relating meeting, to someone a little bit different. You know. Yeah, meet, meeting Larry Bird at his level, and it's like, ha, jokes, jokes on you. <laughs> yeah, that's what separates the the truly, truly, truly great. You know, for me. But no, I thought about that crossing the line. Is there anything he does that I would be like, I oh, actually, that, that was like kind of like maybe not crossing the line. I and mean, there's a couple of times where he kind of just like gets maybe in somebody's face and it's kind of, you know, the language uses like sometimes harsh words, but it's just like, you know, dropping an F-bomb. It's not like, it's not like a, a you know, a, an anti-Semitic slur, you know, um, th- that's where I'm like, okay, like, you know, I wouldn't do that, but like, but like I can, you know, I can see where like just that intensity could like help drive somebody. And like, that may not be a total crossing of the line, um, but there's very few things he does that are not crossing the line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Fundamentally, I agree with him kicking out the guy who doesn't know if he's in tune. I, oh yeah, oh yeah. The way he does it, insult you know, insulting the guy's sure. weight and screaming sure. at him, I don't agree with. But yeah, if you're in the top band in like the top music school in the world, you should know if you're if your instrument's in tune. 100%. Yeah, and again, him having crazy high standards is not that, that's like great. That's like there's no problem there at all. It's like yeah, it's just how he like goes about enforcing them is is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah trying to think through the movie like is there any moment where i'm like yeah you know what good call and there's really not <laughs> no 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 like the that's, manipulation that's thing it. with the folder like clearly he took the folder oh yeah because he knew neiman was better but he couldn't tell him that he couldn't be like i'm promoting you to first chair because you did a good job he's not he had to create it, a situation yeah it was a way to see did he memorize this stuff yeah yeah that's all it was and tanner's like i don't know those charts i don't know them by heart and Neiman's like, I do. And he's like, ah, oh, gotcha, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a hundred percent what it is. But even so, then, um, but even mm-hmm. then, he didn't know it by heart because of a medical issue, not because he's like bad. Yeah. Well, what I mean, mean? It's like, I mean, I mean, that sucks for that guy, but it's like, but like, it, like, so if you're not gonna make any allowances for anything, that's just like a little bit different. It's like, well then like shame on you, you know, like you've lost to somebody good because like you just have these like draconian like ways like, oh, well, you don't know it perfectly. It's like, well, this guy's incapable of knowing it per- perfectly. So like, oh just, yeah. Why is he even in there in the first place? Then you know if you're gonna be that. <laughs> yeah. That well, he's a, he's just incentive for for Neiman. <laughs> yeah. But no, he was already there. He was already there, right? So it's like that. That was like that actually was your main guy. You know, like he was you, the only you, guy. You've he made the, the allowance. Guy. Yeah, you've made the allowance already to have him in here because you think he's talented, right? You think he actually has something. Um, and like you're making allowances for like, hey, like this medical condition does not stop him from being a great drummer. So like, I'm gonna like let him do that. Uh, but then all of a sudden you do this manipulative thing where you like take this thing from him. Where it's like, okay, now he's actually incapable of doing it. It's like that's so unbelievably harsh and like unfair you know that's just just like well uh, again just master manipulator true but in his eyes you know neiman was the one staying in late after school trying to learn this shit he was the one who was dedicated and did not have a medical issue so no no liability there so to fletcher is just like trading up oh no i get that i get that i'm just saying it's, it's another it's example fucked up, but yeah 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 his manipulative <laughs> well just like, he, yeah yeah my thing is, is I if if I if I were Terrence Fletcher, I would I wouldn't allow Tanner to be in my band. Not not like uh, I'd be like, hey, yeah, yes, yeah. I'd be yeah. like, hey, hey, like, hey, man, this is like really high level. There's gonna be moments where you're gonna have to like play off the cuff and like play off of memory. If you yeah. can't do it, I'm really sorry. You know, the the same, part is letting him do it and then punishing for it later. Yes, yes, yeah. It's the same as like, um, what's that kid's name who's like. He's like a real good basketball player, but he only has one arm. And he's like wicked, wicked talented and like was a very high level high school player. Um, and then like he plays at some college, but like that's probably going to be it. It doesn't mean like he's not good and he doesn't like have a place in the sport. But it's like, man, there's like there's going to be a line at some point where like it gets so competitive. Like that's going to be a huge disadvantage. And that, that, you know, that sucks, but that's just kind of like the reality of it. 
can't remember that guy's name. He was he was in high school a couple years ago, and man, he was a lecturer. But yeah, no, you're right. It's it's yeah, it's like yeah, he he's gonna play at the highest level he possibly can. But like, it will eventually just be a thing that just limits limits. Whereas whereas if like you know uh, Doc Rivers is like, yeah, you can go play for my team, and then out of nowhere he's like, nah, (laughs) yeah. You know, like, you know, yeah. like just manipulate them into the situation just to like, you know, to like get someone else to be better or something. Yeah, yeah it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, obviously lots of great quotes and we've 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 talked about a lot of them. Uh, and we, we clearly we clearly have already said J.K. Simmons. This is his movie. He wins. Yeah. Like he wins. He wins the movie. It's not it's not really that close. Teller is great. Uh, you got, you know, Chris Mulkey in that in that that fucking dinner scene is great. Obviously, Paul Reiser is great. Austin Stoll as Connolly. I think he's awesome. Like he's such a such a douche. Like, yeah, man. He's he's all bark, no bite. Yeah. You know, he like just he's like little lines. He's got the sunglasses on like his V-neck the whole time. Yeah, yeah. N- Nate Lang as Carl Tanner. Um I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that like deserves a solid oh, shot. Melissa da- Blanois. Da- yes, Mel- Melissa Blanois. Yeah, she's great. Uh Damon Gupton is the other conductor, the, the black guy. He's also in La La Land, and he's just kind of like, yeah, fuck this, this, this Fletcher guy's insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a small cast, like as far as main players. April Grace, who I love, she's the, she's kind of like the lawyer at the end of the movie, who's like, you gotta like, you gotta like, like this kid killed himself, like you have to come forward so like Fletcher doesn't get away with this. Uh, she's also uh one of the main players in Magnolia, probably my, he's like my my two favorite movies of all time. Like randomly, that April Grace is the connector. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's a small cast, but effective and the two main players are unbelievable um but final category specifically for this movie because it's about music Mm. justin Hurwitz, awesome score original stuff you know obviously does you know there's certain 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 elements of it that are actual jazz songs you know caravan whiplash upswing and these different songs that have been in jazz for a very very long time but is there a part of the score that you guys feel like outshines the rest is there something that that you guys really really enjoy connor um i definitely prefer the jazz standards um i really like too hip to retire oh yeah that is yeah. such a banging just you know that bass intro just mm, god damn that, that's sexy uh yeah i love i'm not really a jazz guy admittedly but i adore the music of this movie it's so just hypnotizing and electric and intimidating it just it really makes you like it impresses you beyond belief the talent these musicians have to do that shit to keep up like that. Um, especially mm. the drumming, you know, caravan, especially my God, is that like un- unreal? I can't, I can't actually picture a human being doing that. Yeah. I was going to say caravan for mine. Um, so I'll piggyback off of that and just, yeah, just be like, yeah, it's just, it's kind of mesmerizing. And obviously it just sounds cool. I, I do. I'm not like, you know, I'm not like listen to jazz it often, but I know Austin, you're, you're a pretty big jazz fan. You would listen to it a lot. Like when we were living together in St. Louis, um like around that time and it's it is a great like thing to just like kind of like play fifa to or just like oh uh, yeah like write to right like that's that was like a a big thing too i remember like really enjoying that just kind of like or kind of like you know clean up the place too like um yeah especially some of like some of the more upbeat stuff i just really really like i mean it almost would be a good like kind of like thing to kind of get in the zone if it was like like a warm-up you know like before you know a game or something like that like that'd be really cool uh so yeah i i I, I would go kind of with one of the jazz pieces and i think i would go caravan for my for mine yeah, Car- Caravan's great, man. It's, it's excellent. Whiplash is great by Hank Levy. I like, got the fucking that song rules. Like it's such a cool. It's like we didn't mention, but like he gets Whiplash in the movie in the car. Like I, I love all that. Like that connection. I think it's really cool, even though it's kind of all on the nose. Uh, I just think <laughs> think it rules. But but man, I I think I think Hurwitz like fucking knocks out of the park in the in the uh, the score. Like um, there's the overture like at the beginning of the movie. So like that initial scene, they're like bah, 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 bah. the snare is hitting and like the 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 camera's closing in on 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 Andrew as drum as he's drumming and like basically we're like at the perspective of of Fletcher like walking in there, and then he's you know does that whole bit's great when he's like, <laughs> did I tell you to start playing? <laughs> you know like he's already like I'm master like this you're in my, you're in my fucking room. Uh, I love that bit. But right when that ends and like it shows New York, it's kind of like a lot of cool bah, 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 you know like little shots of New York. It's like. This is where he lives. Like he's a young kid going to school. It's just like a great kind of like introduction to our setting, which is like a beautiful city that's known for jazz, like known for a great jazz musician. So I think the overture by uh, Justin Hurwitz is awesome. Uh, I love uh, the accident. It's like a five minute bit playing over that when he realizes he doesn't have the sticks, goes back, 
that whole thing gets in the car and he's like tell him i'm gonna be on that fucking stage you know like that whole bit the accident it's like a four or five minute song that song is fucking sick uh and then fletcher's song in the club is written by justin Hurwitz. uh that beautiful beautiful you know piano riff and uh just kind of like slow chill jazz going on there uh no two words which is a, a bit that's playing after that in the background that song that song is written by justin Hurwitz and nicholas bertel like what <laughs> what a what a cool combo of, of, of dudes you know making making that song so I, yeah, I love I love the score. I love I love the sound. I love the soundtrack. I love the score. I think it's like a great, you know, it's a great way. It's a great way to learn about jazz. Like it's a door opener, right? Like I think a lot of music fans and jazz fans have criticized Whiplash for not being jazz enough. Like they're like, oh, they only they only reference these certain artists or this or like it's such like a minute amount. But it's like, yeah, but it's a, it's a hour and forty minute movie. They can't talk about the history of the of the genre, you know, like. If you want to do that, go watch a you know, go watch Ken Burns documentary. You know, like that's that's not what we're here for. But it is cool to like if someone doesn't doesn't know anything about jazz or like doesn't really care for it, but then they hear Caravan or they hear uh you know Whiplash, and then they're like, I'm gonna go listen to that. And then they find other people, you know, and then they find other people through Spotify or whatever it is, and you like it opens the floodgates of like, you know what? I actually do like jazz, right? Like, I think that's great. It definitely came at a good time in my life because uh i do love this genre like i still listen to it i listen to it today i was listening to charles mingus um my favorite jazz album ever uh i think charles mingus is like an absolute absolute mastermind and uh you know it was just like this big dude who just smoked weed all the time and just like just figured like figured music out like i think he's just a genius so uh after this movie came out i was living with this guy who's the biggest like jazz you know encyclopedia that i've ever met and i was living with him and I mean, he would just play these records and like, he'd show them to me. And like, I was like, I know a little bit, but I knew a lot more. Like once I talked to him, started like allowing him to just like introduce me to stuff and tell me like, dude, like this, like, this is the genre, like everything, everything steals from this genre. Like this is the genre. Like this is where, again, he, he kind of did the whole quote, like this is before La La Land came out, but uh, his name's Jacob. Jacob was like, dude, like, it's like total chaos but still somehow organized, somehow structured. Like this guy steals the song. This guy steals the song. Now this guy steals it. Like, but they're all like, once a guy steals it, the other guys have to adapt until they get to hijack it back. Like it's insane. It's complete, completely incredible watching people play. So um, I, yeah, I'm totally into it. And I, I think this movie is like a good tool for people who maybe like want an introduction to it. You know, you got to start yeah. somewhere. You got to start somewhere. So I, I, I'm, and, and you know our brother Jeremy, you know Adam, he, he you know he went to McNally Smith, went to a music school like a really nice one, and and says like yeah, I mean this movie like nails some of that stuff, some of that like everyone who's like eighteen, nineteen coming in like has their passions, has the thing that like they want to be good at. There's the kids who are like I want to be really good, and there's the kids who are like I'm here because I love to play music. You know, and, like I love that. I love that like a guy who like who is a musician who plays music every day, our brother like stands by this movie like i think it's really cool because there are some some pricks out there who are just like yeah but like miles teller he's not really you know really that good you know it's like well he's an actor who had like yeah, five months to learn a whole instrument like that's not really my concern no, with the movie yeah. my concern is that it's 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 convincing enough and the dialogue and the directing is like unreal so all that stuff is like it's like a cool uh it's like a cool bonus you know like all the music part of it to me it's more about the mono e mono what does this mean what does it mean to be great are you obsessed with fame or actually like fulfilling your own desires you know i, I don't know like all the all the gray stuff we talked about i think it, i think it's i think that's why why i love it you know the jazz part the music part is just a bonus just cherry on top i agree yeah where do you all lie on that like in terms of you know creatively because like I'd rather be you know good at what I do than famous for what I do. Oh yeah, I mean, I always yeah, I've always yeah. said um, being a like being a, like a kind of a famous writer is like the best kind of fame because your work is known but your face is not. Hmm. Yeah, for like sure. That. You can you can live like day to day like a normal life, but like the things you do and write and what you, you things you put out in the world are known and like and like respected. You know. Um, I think that's 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 like the best kind of like possible and not even like fame, but like notoriety is probably the best word. Best kind of notoriety. 
Yeah. I like Yeah, that. I totally I totally agree. Like, yeah, I think it's great to like want to be really good at something and and not only be really good at something, but to connect with others or to impact others or to like change someone's life. Like I, I Link Later's always been one of my favorite creators because he's always like, if I don't do this, and like someone might need it though. Like if like if I don't do this thing that like I'm itching to do because I want to do it like to kind of like be therapy for myself maybe like that doesn't get done if I don't do it. Like, cause my voice is my voice. If I don't make boyhood, it might not ever happen. It, it won't happen. You know, like if I don't make this 10 year movie that some people see as boring and simplistic, but others see as this like really emotional jaunt through like a person's life is that like, that's the audience. It's okay if these people don't like it, but there is an audience for it that like needs it or wants yeah. it or desire, you know, is desiring it. And I think that's like super super valiant you know i i think that's like a good way to look at it is you know you, yeah you, you, of course it's great to like make money off of something you love to do but you should always be doing it to like give give you know to give back to somebody or yeah. um uh, or or allow them to like give back to you you know it's like it's a give and take thing that's like why art's so cool is that we all have like something to share whether it be writing or you know drawing or making music or playing to me playing a sport is like totally giving back to to the community, to the culture, like the way you do something is, is, is you. Right. So I think yeah, doing it like you're the best of your ability and, and doing it for yourself and for others is like, that's all. If the money comes, the fame comes cool. Yep. I agree. I don't know if I ever told this on the show, but um, in high school I had, um, I, I was a mentor to somebody and I didn't even know I was a mentor until Oh, well, all right. So I, there was this guy I knew who was a friend of mine. He had, um, given up on writing, uh, like years before I'd met him. He was just like, he didn't think he was that good. And I had written some books in high school, some, a sci, some sci-fi bullshit that I've since recalled. Cause I know I can do better, but, um, <laughs> I, just being that's honest, your, that's, that's your prerogative. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I wrote them, I self-published them. I would bounce ideas off of him all the time. And, Apparently he was inspired by that and started writing and published a book of poetry that he dedicated to me. Oh, oh man. And that was yeah. the most incredible feeling that I had helped him like rediscover his voice. I mean, I'd, I'd never done anything like that before for somebody. And that was just amazing. I have his book on my shelf right here. Uh, and yeah, I just, I, that was, that was, that was special. Yeah, that's yeah, really cool. that, that's so sick. Uh, yeah, I mean, and and Adam, I know like for for you, like there's there, there's that thing where, like you said, like oh, nobody wants to go back and like five years later, like hey, Fletcher, like hey, man, like I'm in town, like you want to hang out, or or like hey, like what do you think about this? But like, that's not happening with him, but it has happened with you, and not only has it happened with you, it's like trickled down to other people in your life, including myself, like. Uh, when uh, Brown and I went to Los Angeles, uh, the last day we got to hang out with Sam, Sam Thomason, shout out, awesome movie mind, a guy who, guy who graduated from USC and is like very much feeling the effects of, of Hollywood right now of LA and, uh, wish nothing but the best for him. And that day, like I hadn't seen him in like seven years maybe, but he was like, dude, I'll pick you up. I'll take you to the airport. Like we can hang out. I'll show you this park. Uh, and like I hung out with him and like, that wouldn't be there without the relationship you built with him. And then by allowing me to like, not just be your brother, but be your friend to where now, Oh, now Austin and Sam, you guys get along or you guys hang out. And like, now I can hang out with him without you. <laughs> like that's like po the power of like giving, like receiving, giving, receiving, you know, taking when you need to giving when you need to like always being open, like both ways, like being an open door, but also like allowing people to pour into you. Right. Like that's, that's like, that's like super, super powerful. And, and, you know, I've, I have friends who were because of, you know, kids that you coach that were like maybe my age or like a year younger, a year older, who I just connected with. And now like, I still talk to them and Sam is one of those people. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't have, I would have had to pay for an Uber if it wasn't for you. <laughs> well, for that, uh, that, for that alone, I'm, I'm happy with my philosophy. And, <laughs> and that shit, that shit costs a lot of money. You know, if you go from, uh, you know, go from, Hollywood proper to LAX is not cheap. So <laughs> I, I am haunted by the fucking like $80 Uber we took from the hotel to the airport. I was. 
Yeah. I couldn't believe it's, ins- it's insane. Cause there's nothing else you can do, you know, yeah. like yeah. there's nothing else you can do unless you know a Sam. <laughs> <laughs> shout, shout out sam thomason yeah love that guy uh yeah i mean that's yeah I, yeah i love that the final episode of this project has kind of caused us to be like this is who we are <laughs> you know, like, yeah. this, this is who i am so i think it's really cool you know i think i think we all uh like to like to as best we can most days have our head in our shoulders and try to keep looking forward and help people out and be glass half full that's that's my goal <laughs> that's my goal every day yeah I definitely am more glass half empty most of the time than I talk to you. <laughs> and that, that changes pretty quickly or I'm just like, you know what? Things aren't that bad. This is nice. This is life's worth living. I enjoy this. Cyn- cynical Connor. <laughs> <laughs> cynical Connor is quite funny though. <laughs> I try. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do a, uh, let's do our last segment. Uh, what's in the box and get the hell out of here. all right what's in the box this is always fun um for for these movies especially that are a 4.4 in letterbox but you gotta have those people out there that just gotta say what they gotta say you know uh this (laughs) this is a uh, review from 2020 uh this review has 252 likes this is a very popular uh letterbox user by the name of jizz monkey oh boy two stars Wondering why none of the students have camera phones. Because if they did, they could get the guy dismissed. Or the ones with more ambition could just go ahead and blackmail the fucker. <laughs> I, pretty good. No, there, there, there's, there's a couple times where I'm like, because obviously, you know, he's, it is like, it is like set in current times, like in, you know, 2014, it's seemingly, and he's like on his iPhone a couple times. And it's just like, yeah, I have thought about that too. It's like, what, like just one video and like the guy's done. You know, it's like, it's just like, one one video and, and like, one video like, yep yeah it's like one 10 minute segment segment of any of his classes you could get him on a number of violations it's just like i don't i don't know i that that is the part but it's like i think there is this like this like you know both a fear and a kind of a, a like oh like do i want to be the one that kind of does this because like this guy could help me get to a next level it, yeah. yeah it's an easy easily solvable plot hole to me like you're telling me this guy who was so by the book intimidating terrifying don't be late or i will fuck you up he doesn't have a no phone sign yeah phones off yeah yeah but the second a phone rings in his in the middle of his practice he's gonna beat that guy to death yeah <laughs> yeah and like delete the evidence yeah <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm not surprised that no one's tried to like do that to him because i yeah yeah no i mean he you know he attacks people for being slightly off rhythm the second somebody brings a phone up no 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 <laughs> yeah yeah I, it's a, it's a it's a funny review you know two stars is is harsh but eh. yeah i get what i get what i get where jizz monkey's coming from <laughs> jizz is that of the upstate new york jizz monkeys yeah i i guess so <laughs> do, y'all, do y'all both have this five stars yes I, I oh yeah okay, oh yeah. yeah i mean i have a like, four and a half and i'm like toying with like man i probably should bump it up to five yeah i mean i i there's a, one of my favorite reviews ever on Letterbox is Sean Finnessy for uh, The Godfather. And he says, he says, Letterbox, I challenge you to add a star so I can give this six. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same way about Whiplash. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, it's, there's no, there's no way to, or, or another great quote from uh, Connor's Uncle Sean. Um, we were talking about um, Escape from New York and we were kind of like, Connor, we're both like, yeah, I have it a nine or whatever, da da da. And he's like, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know what to rate it. I just love it. <laughs> you, know, you know, I, what could I say? Like, I've seen it so many times. It's hard to say, like, say, you know, articulate how I feel other than like, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel about Whiplash. I feel the same way. Uh, next review, Ed Gonzalez. This is a review from September of 2014. One and a half stars. Exhilarating, astounding, and electrifying reads the quotes from the film's poster from agents of our culture of mean. Okay. I'll give it electrifying miles. Teller is a mean drummer, or maybe it's the jazzy cutting that tricks tricks one into thinking so, but the, but the implausible scenario is pretty low down and how it tries to milk suspense from an unbridled spectacle of human cruelty. Not even sure. Damien Chazelle believes his paltry justification for JK Simmons worse than Gordon Ramsay shtick. Maybe someone needs to throw a director's chair at his head so we can see if he's capable of drumming up a Casablanca. <laughs> mm. Jesus. That's well written. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's that's uh that's Ed Ed Gonzalez. Yeah, just like jazzy cutting. Yeah. I mean there's a lot of reviews like that that are just kind of like, yeah, this is like don't let it fool you. This is not as good as it thinks it is, type thing. Whiplash to me is leagues better than Casablanca. I, I love Casablanca, but yeah, I mean I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by I'm gonna stand by Whiplash. It's funny because like just two years after that that review is uh, again 2014. Just a couple years later, Damien Giselle comes out with a movie where he references Casablanca very, like, very blatantly uh, towards the beginning of the movie. Uh, so it's like, did he read that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Was was Giselle on Letterboxd in I hope he's not, not that sure. kind of filmmaker who's going to read the reviews and be like, well, then I got to change something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I think he was just shouting out Casablanca and, and, and old Hollywood because that's what Mia was all obsessed with in the movie. Um, last review. Molly Ringworm. <laughs> what is what is uh what is uh uh Jesse Eisenberg Zuckerberg say in in Social Network after um Andrew Garfield is like reading the emails of the people at the Phoenix? He's like literary geniuses. These guys are. <laughs> that's what that's what I feel when I read. Yeah. From what what is his like? Was it like what Z- Zuck on it or something like that? Yeah. Zuck on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh, this is a one-star review, also from 2014. Uh, let's see. I'm sure the makers of Whiplash think they're saying something about the human cost of prioritizing artistic greatness, but I could also safely bet that it was pitched to its backers as like the first half of me- like the first half of Metal Jacket, but set in a music school. It's actually more preposterous than it- than that sounds as the movie unfolds into nothing more than a two-man pissing contest. J.K. Simmons without exaggeration, plays a hard-ass character that is no less emotionally and physically abusive as Sergeant Hartman. <laughs> His yelled ver- verbal insults are no less polite either. Simmons is game enough. Going deep in uh, Vern Schlinger, there it is, Schlinger, the, uh, or Schillinger, sorry, uh, that's his Oz character uh, okay. mode, but that doesn't make his character any less ridiculous. A person in the movie refers to him as all bark, no bite, and that basically sums it up. Miles Teller is game as evidenced by his being required to almost exclusively shed literal blood, sweat, and tears, especially the first two. He even gets literal whiplash. Ha ha! Fuck this movie. <laughs> oh, I geez. didn't add up. <laughs> no, I was no, gonna say, no there, it didn't. There were moments where it sounded like this person really liked this movie, and then yeah, and then, and then one star. <laughs> yeah, one, one star from Molly. Molly Ringwear. Yeah, and I'd love to hear like what is a polite. Like insult, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the phrasing of that, I don't like, know. his insults I don't are no like, I, I don't get it. But I never really thought about comparing this to Full Metal Jacket. But that's that's an interesting. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, this yeah. this is my rifle. <laughs> Without me, I'm useless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely got got that going on. Hmm. Got that 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 first whatever hour or forty five minutes or so of, of Full Metal Jacket, the the Marine bit or whatever. Um. Uh, yeah, I see it. I see the the mono mono thing is. If it, I don't understand how it could, but if it's not if it's not working for you, this movie's not going to work. So like, whatever you know. There's a lot of like one one star, two star reviews that are just kind of like, yeah, this is just you know a, a pissing contest. This is like uh, it's just dick measuring or whatever. And you know, I think I think with all the conversations that we had about, it, obviously it's deeper than that for you know and us the way we read into it, the way we see kind of the what you know what the stakes are and like what what's worth you know what's worth you know is it worth pushing someone that far no you know we all agree like he's a monster he's a villain so uh yeah you know no hate here from us we got two five stars and a four and a half star from adam so this is our last movie that we're doing and that was a lot of fun i think we're going to probably start doing the categories that way moving forward uh most likely you know uh next week we're going to start 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 doing spooky season stuff you know we're gonna start trying to Maybe maybe shout out some some horror movies and, and have some fun with that. So be on the lookout for that stuff. You know, thanks for listening, guys. Um, if you like what we do, feel free to uh, give us a follow on Facebook, uh, created by uh, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, tw- tw- Twitter or X, uh, Instagram at Filmgasm. Uh, follow Connor Nine Five on Letterboxd. Uh, if you go to his followers or following, you can find the rest of the team pretty much from here at Filmgasm. Uh, if you'd like to become a monthly donor to Filmgas and Productions, feel free to click on the link in the episode description. From there, click on support this podcast. Any amount of donations will go right back in the show. We appreciate anything that you can give. Thanks to the entire Filmgas and team for their contributions week in, week out. Uh, special shout out to Cooley Cal for our theme music. 
And most of all, thank you all for listening. Keep watching movies. We'll see you very soon. Thank you.